check in real quick. Hey, before you get ready to watch your favorite show here on the network, I need you to do me a humongous favor. Go to all of your favorite social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. Go to all of them. Make sure you subscribe to the channels. Make sure you're following us on all social media platforms. Takes 30 seconds. Just press the follow button right there. Make sure you got your notifications up. Make sure you got everything rocking and rolling. And then make sure you are 100% logged into HBCUnightly.com forward slash join. That is the network home of all things HBCU Nightly Network. Go to HBCUnightly.com forward slash join. And then go to HBCU Nightly. Make sure you got the merch. Modern Revival merch is on there. Shipping is free, but we always tell you that. But go to all of your social media platforms. Go to HBCUnightly.com forward slash join. Make sure you're a part of the community. Make sure you like Share, subscribe, everything, wherever you at, and then enjoy the show. I'm getting ready to go. I'm going to go sit down and we'll enjoy the show. I'll see y'all on the side. Of it. I love it. Tonight on HBC Unitedly Live with Joshua Sim Sr., it's spring football time. It is my second favorite time of the year. Aside from the football season itself, we go into the minutia. It's time to start getting into the small details of the football season. And we start that tonight. Also, we have some special guests from the nation's capital joining us tonight. As we break off and kick off the spring football season, I got to make sure I chop it up with some of the guys that I know, that I love and respect, that play this game the way we always talk about playing this game. And we'll have those youngsters on here to talk some ball and see how their spring football season is going. We absolutely kick off the spring football series with the crew and contributors. Everybody is back tonight. The entire gamut of the crew and contributors are back. That means myself, my sister Erica, my brother DJ Jones, G Ski is back in the building. Dave, Busy is in the building. I mean, everybody, along with some of our partners and special guests that always join around this time of the year. So sit back, relax, get you some popcorn, get you a great drink. HBC Nightly Live with Joshua Sim Senior starts right now. <laughs> It is Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. If you're on that West Coast, you could have been anywhere in the world. You chose to be here with us. This is HBC Nightly Live with your humble, gracious, phenomenal, blessed and highly favored, highly flavored host with the most Joshua Sim Sr. And ladies and gentlemen, as I said during my intro, this is my second most favorite time of the year. We finally get to see a little bit of that paint come out on the football field. We finally get to see the lights turn on inside the football stadium. We get to smell a little bit of the spring football air. They start to roll the pigskin out a little bit during this time of the year. And absolutely, we can hear the cleats clanking on the pavement and the sidewalk as guys are going onto the natural turf or they're going into the turf. Man, it is spring football season, and nobody does it better than the HBC Unitedly Network. I told you guys when we first got in and we got started that we were going to have the gamut. This is a six to eight week marathon that we go on here at the HBC Nightly Network. All of our partners, whether it's the Blue Bloods Network or whether we have HBCU Overdrive here, as well as our partners here at the network and everybody that's a part of this network, we all come together during this time of the year. Whether it's our crew from the MD squad with Dave and Busy, or it's like HBCU Hoops Weekly. They got to turn on their football hat with everybody we have there. We all come together. Myself, my partner, BJ Jones, Erica Lee, and everybody we have here at the network. This is the time of the year where you guys pay to see us. This is the time you guys pay to see us. You expect us to be the experts that we say that we are. And this is the time of the year where we get to show you guys just how much we know about this game whether it's the extreme detail-oriented perspective of Gerald Huggins or Markham Bates or B.J. Jones or Zach 
or it's the attention to detail and the, the camaraderie that comes with it from my sister Erica. Or it's our brother Herb who breaks down the smallest details. Listen, we do this better as a collective than any other concept that exists in the football world. And I mean the full congruence of the HBCU sports media. Whether you're locking, looking, locking in with any of our partners or any of the people we have a lot of love for, or you tuned in right here every Wednesday night for the next six to eight weeks as we get ready to get into the summer, we break down every single schedule. We give you a prognostication for every single program. We tell you who we think are going to be the top guys or who are the guys that's got the biggest opportunity to take steps forward this offseason. We go directly at the spring games and we'll report live at the spring games. You'll see many of us on the sideline with our media badges across our chest or around our necks and we'll be talking ball. And for some of us, just being on the green grass will feel like we're a little bit closer to what we miss the most. I know for myself, I will without a shadow of a doubt be at 1801 Fayetteville Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. I will have my feet with my sneakers planted on the sideline, but that's not where I'm stopping. I've got three other places that I'm going to pick to come and check out spring practice or spring games this offseason. This is just my way of being able to stay close to the game that I love so much. The game that I've got messed up fingers and scratches on my knees and a rod in my ankle and shoulders still ain't right. And when I wake up in the morning, I got to take my shoulders and do like this from this beautiful game that we love. The same game that my brother BJ Jones had the opportunity to play professionally. The same game that my brothers Markham Banks and Gerald Huggins had a chance to get them war wounds that their young bodies are still suffering from from today. This is the beautiful game of football. And we have finally gotten to a place in the HBCU football world where this is year round. We don't stop. We don't slow down. We don't take a break. In basketball, I know that y'all done had to start the sound light and all of that good stuff. It's our time now, dog. It's time for y'all to go on and slide on out the way. It's time for you to put them jump shots back in your pocket. Put all of them free throws back on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? Just put all them back to the basket, back out like, ah, you out there looking like a team to dream. All that stuff got to go to the side. NFL draft is on the way. The UFL football season is getting ready to kick off. Spring football is uh, everybody out of winter break. Everybody out of winter workouts now. These young fellas are hungry. They ready to rock and roll. And unless your name is Hampton, you have a spring game coming up. Hampton decided to have his in the background while wasn't nobody paying attention. Like we don't know what's up at Hampton. We know. So kudos to Hampton. I feel you going to get it out the way so you guys can spend some time. And we absolutely will talk softball. We absolutely will talk baseball. We absolutely going to talk track and field. We're going to talk tennis. Yeah, we're going to cover those sports, but let's keep it real. We've been keeping it real here since day one, y'all. Football is our first love. And you can't expect for us to just kick the first love to the side. Come on. We're going to talk everything else and the shorty that we know we're trying to, you know. I, I digress because I'm there and I ain't going to talk about that. But what I will say is when we get to this sport, there's a certain – Je ne sais quoi, a certain touch that we can provide to this game that you just can't get everywhere else. I mean, you just can't get it everywhere else. It's just a little bit different. So I say it without being so mean. Or I don't mean to step on no toes. And if you love to be on the tennis court, I ain't mad at you. If you're playing on the softball mounds, I ain't mad at you. Baseball, I know y'all getting started. I know the school down the highway, that's all they want to talk about anyway, since both. I digress. Football season, spring football, that is, is upon us. And it is time for us to do what y'all absolutely pay us to do. And let's break this game down with the X's and O's to the smallest detail in the way that y'all know we do so well. This was my moment. We'll be right back after this commercial break. We got some special, special guests back here. And we're going to bring them up on the screen, as well as my brother BJ Jones and my sister Erica Lee. This is HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Sims Sr. We'll be right back after this commercial break. This episode of HBCU Nightly Live is powered by the all new, brand new, brand spanking new HBCUNightly.com. 
you go to hbcunightly.com forward slash shop and put in the code HBCU, you'll receive an additional 15% off plus free shipping nationwide. Excluding Alaska and Hawaii, of course. Go to hbcunightly.com forward slash shop, put in the code HBCU and receive an additional 15% off plus free shipping nationwide, excluding Alaska and Hawaii. Also, go to hbcunightly.com forward slash watch and check out the entire video on demand catalog for all of season two's episodes, player interviews, coaches interviews, all there, right at the fingertips. Also, go to hbcunightly.com forward slash join to check out the entire community, articles, editorials, one-on-one conversations. It allows for you to be able to do all of that 100% free. Go to hbcunightly.com forward slash shop. Go to hbcunightly.com forward slash watch and go to hbcunightly.com forward slash join and have some fun. You're watching HBCU Nightly Live with my dad, Joshua Sam Sr. Let's start the show. You're the HBCU Nightly, Nightly Live. The HBCU Nightly Spring Series is kicked off. As you see, I got my partners on here. My brother, BJ Jones, my sister, Erica Lee. Uh, as we get ready to kick this thing off, I must say this first. Erica is the most strategic person we know that exists in this world. See, we started talking about this, BJ. Remember we started talking about how we was going to roll out the spring series? We started talking about it months ago, and we were saying, like, you know, let's roll it out around this time. And she was just calculated with how she wanted to do this. I mean, she was calculated from the calendar and how she wanted to do this. She was perfectly calculated. So I can't be mad at her. But I will say this. These young fellas here that we bring up tonight, they play the game the way we talk about playing the game, B. They play the game the way we talk about playing the game. Uh, there's not a lot of guys that I talk about specifically either on the offense side or specifically on the offense side of the ball, as well as yourself, BJ, on the defense side of the ball, that we talk about that that carries the game the way we talk about the, the way the game needs to be carried. Their approach to the game is what's so fascinating to me. Uh, before the show started, we had a chance to ask them what the class load was looking like and, you know, how everything was going with the spring semester. And the poise and the approach in their answers – to this was was I was I was super impressed. And I'm looking at these young men who are playing the game that yeah, I'm just keeping real B at this point. I don't think I ain't I ain't put on no cleats and no pads and golly, man. Almost almost I don't know, almost 15 years, dog. Almost yeah. for you, it's about right there. Yeah. You, yeah. So I'm saying these young brothers, they carrying the mantle. But I, I want to make sure I, I go back to Erica real quick before we bring these young brothers up. You were extremely, extremely strategic in how you did this. And then I'm going to let you go ahead and intro these young brothers. Josh, so, why wouldn't I have had the top dogs of the MEAC here first? I ain't going there. We ain't going there tonight. It's fresh. It's brand new. We got butterflies all around. I ain't going there. <laughs> I like how you did that. I like how you did that. Man, intro these young brothers up, man, so we can bring them on up. Okay, you guys. I'm so, so excited to have these four guys here. Um, I'm like their biggest fan. They have so many fans across the HBCU football world, and I was so happy that they agreed to come up and be the first players we've ever interviewed on this show, which is really, really awesome. So we have Casey Hawthorne, Carson Hinton, Jared Hunter, and Kenny Gallup here today from the Howard University Bison football team. Oh, that. Claps, claps, claps. oh man. Oh, man. Young fellas, how y'all doing tonight, man? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, what's going on? What's good? Uh, man, well, well, first off, I want to make sure we start it off right ask you guys how, how the spring semester is going for you guys. How's everything started for you guys? How's everything going? How are you feeling? All of that good stuff. Go ahead, tank zero. Go ahead, start off zero. Yeah. Uh, man, you know, the spring semester is going well. You know, we had a, a great successful winter workouts. Uh, you know, a lot of guys put in some work in and, you know, now just spring ball, you know, you know, I get excited about spring ball because you kind of get an idea, you know, a picture, you know, 
how things going to look for the season. You know, guys just out there competing, um, just, you know, just learning new techniques and, you know, just sharpening our tools and, you know, preparing for the season. No, that's awesome. I want to give you guys each a little chance to do your Howard intros. Uh, name, <laughs> year, major, hometown, and also what position you play on the team. Uh, for sure. So, uh, you know, my name is Kenny Gallo Jr. I'm from Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, I'm a health science major, and I actually graduated this spring, so I'm definitely excited about that. So, let's go. I go ahead. I'm Jerry Hunter. I'm a sports management major from Louisa, Virginia. Uh, I graduated this spring as well. So trying to finish strong and get ready for the next chapter. Well, I'll go ahead. Uh, my name is Casey Hawthorne. Uh, I'm from Seaburn, Florida. Uh, I'm a sports management uh, major, and um, I graduate this summer, and um, I play receiver. What up, though? My name is Carson Hinn. I'm a senior sports management major. Uh, from Detroit, Michigan. So, you know, yeah, I play Nixon. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So first question, um, a little bit of a softball. Anybody can answer. What are the major advantages of playing football at Howard? I answer. So, um, you know, just really playing at Howard, to be honest, man, you know, you're right there, in, you know, in the capital. You're right there in D.C., uh, you know, it's a beautiful area. And then just, just now, just Howard just changing, like the culture just changing. Um, you know, it's, it's starting to become a winning culture. You know, other teams got to respect us now. So um, just playing in Green Stadium, man, you know, it feels amazing. You know, fans like yourself, you know, come out, support, cheer. Uh, my mom, she come out there and cheer. So just the atmosphere out there, you know, it's just the, like it's amazing just to play out there. Yeah, I feel like the energy just crazy. Like, you know, being around, you know, beautiful black people and then that winning culture that we really set, like not even just with football, like all around how athletics. So, you know, it's a good environment to be in, you know, great people to be around, you know, you really grow here. Yeah, on that too, I feel like we kind of changing that narrative of how we're just being an academic school. And, you know, it's kind of now people can understand how it wins in every sport for real. So. We're academic and we get our sports, so change that there for the next generation. Y'all hear Jared? We win in every sport, every single sport, all the sports. <laughs> um, how's spring ball going? Um, there are some new additions to the team. There's new new coaching staff. Like, how's that process been to gel the team in this new in this new football season? I see. I'm going for. I say spring ball have been real successful. You know, um, we got some new pieces added to the uh, team. Uh, people really just been working on their craft and their technique. You know, like that's our main focus. Like your craft is who you are. You know, you want to. That's who uh, teams view you is how you how you craft yourself and stuff like that. Anyone else? Um, I'll um, I'll pretty much I'll say uh, it's it's been pretty um, good. Um, I know coming from a receiver standpoint, we got a, a new uh, receiver coach and everything, so it's just it's just like getting him like involved in the game and everything. Of course, we lost our quarterback Quentin Williams. Um, it's just time for uh, other guys to step up, but uh, it's been going pretty well. Um, we we got we got some stuff in the making. Oh, that's exciting. I'm going to shoot a question to Carson. Carson, so can you walk us through the Celebration Bowl pick six? All of the Howard Sports Group chats are still talking about that pick six. They're saying it's going down in the, the history of legendary plays for Howard University football. Can you talk us through that play? Uh, it's actually kind of crazy because, you know, the play only lasts about like six, six, seven seconds. So um, I say the play before – um, they kind of ran like the same thing. It was like um, RPO. Uh, they had like a bubble on the outside. And it was running um, like a uh, yeah RPO basically. So the first time they ran it, I kind of got out of leverage. Uh, the tight end got up on me uh, and sealed me off. So it kind of looked open to the QB, and I saw him um, like looking at the sideline trying to run the same play again. And I'm thinking in the back of my head like they're gonna come back to that play. You know, you got out of leverage. You can't get out of leverage. So. Um, they line up and I want to say Dakio Gun Minus 
and a yak motion, tight end come motion as a as a receiver. And I'm like, oh, this is the same formation as the last plate. They about to try to run this bubble. So, you know, I'm like, win with speed. Um, that's how you that's your that's my um my best skill or my best strength, you know, speed. So they hike the ball. I see number four. He looked back for a screen and I just go. I take off. Next thing you know, the ball is in my hands and I'm in the end zone. So it was a great moment, you know. Um we fought hard. Yeah, I did fight hard. Yeah, I did fight hard. That's awesome. EJ, you wanna take one? Sure. You guys, uh Howard is a different Howard. Um, then the Howard that you guys entered um, a few years ago. You guys talk about changing the culture. At what point was it that you guys kind of see the culture change for you uh, for yourselves, where you kind of built that momentum? Um, and, and of course, you know that that led to a celebration bowl um, a year ago. And what can we expect from this Howard football team this year? Uh, what you guys now have built that momentum and kind of change the image of Howard University football? Um, I can answer that. So I can say for me, um, when I realized, like, okay, we're going to change this around. So I want to say the end of the 2021 season, we had a lot of young guys. So, of course, you know, everybody knew about the COVID year or whatever. And so 2021 was a lot of guys, like, first year actually playing college football. But it was also, like, we was in games – and, you know, teams are just, you know, just older than us, but we was right there. We was right there competing. Like, South Carolina State won the Celebration Bowl in 2021, and I believe we lost, like, 15 to 12. So I was just like, man, you know, if everybody stick together and, you know, we just have a good off season and work out hard and things like that, you know, I feel like we were in pretty good hands. And so I want to say going to the 2022 season, that spring ball, but also that camp, I mean, guys just flying around different, you know, we talking trash to each other like like we knew that we you know we had confidence in ourselves you know we you know we knew it was pretty good and so that was the you know the big difference you know just believing in ourselves believing you know what coach scott and you know all the other coaches was you know preaching to us and you know things like that and just having faith in our coaches so that you know ended up making us be uh successful and then um to answer your next question um to be honest i feel like man it's gonna be a exciting season you know i feel like um you know, everybody going to give us their best shot. You know, that's, you know, that's, you know, what happens when, you know, you, you know, become champions and things like that. And I feel like we're ready for it. You know, uh, like I say, you know, I feel like we have the confidence. We build confidence. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm betting on us against anybody. So, you know, I'm definitely excited. And I feel like it's going to be a great year for us. Josh, you want to take a question? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a little closer to the X's and O's. Um, you talk about the maturation that you guys have been able to go through in the time that you've been there inside of that Howard program. Uh, for my offensive guys, you know, how well has this program prepared you guys for the speed of this game on the collegiate level? It's much faster than, uh, than, than most people will tell you when you're coming out of high school. Um, there's a lot of small details that you got to get right very fast, very early um, as you make the transition from high school to college. And clearly this program has prepared you guys to make the transition to the speed of the game on this level. So I'm going to start with my offensive guys. Um, as you guys have seen, you know, now at this point, you guys have not seen a defense that, that you can't recognize. You you can't see an alignment. Casey, you can't see a DB line up in front of you or a linebacker stand over the top of you or split the difference between you and the number one and number two receiver. At this point, Jerry, you don't see a front in front of you from the defense. You don't see a front seven or, or an alignment that doesn't look recognizable to you at this point. How has this program prepared you guys to be able to make the transition for the game to slow down so that you've been able to be able to recognize what you see in front of you and you'll be able to exploit it? Yeah, I'll start with that one. Uh, you know, coming the school I came from in high school, we didn't really, you know, X's and O's wasn't really the thing. It was just we had, were so talented. We had players that could just go out there and make plays. So it was like at the end of the day, you might not know what to do, what the concept is, but you can go make a play. And I think uh, my running back coach, Coach Johnson, when I got to college, the first thing he kind of sat me down and talked to me about was on this level, everybody's talented, everybody's fast, everybody's strong. So you got to find little things that make you different. So the little details, like you said, the little details about the game. So knowing that, 
if he's a three set, he probably not gonna go back over to a different gap. He probably gonna stay in that gap. So just knowing little things like that, pre snap, you know, you still gotta react to the snap of the ball. But knowing pre snap, okay, this guy's over here, he's probably not gonna get back over there. That helps you be that much faster when you play. Because even though guys are faster and you're stronger than you, if you know the game better than they do, you know, that helps you out a lot. And Jared, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Casey. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, just like Jerry said, um, in high school, just it was like everybody just was really playing on talent. Um, you know, some guys just was better than other guys and everything. Uh, my transition to college, um, my coach Lindsey Lamar. Uh, I remember when I first got here, he told me that um, you gonna have to learn the defense. You are gonna have to learn like what the defense is trying to do to you. You gonna have to like mm-hmm. read the defense, like not only. Pre- Yeah. Game down. Case, I think we. I, case, I think we lost a quick second. Case, I think we lost a full quick second there. Um, I'll, I'll transition to my I'll defensive guys, to my defense guys, Kenny and, and Carson. Kenny and, and... Defense is much more instinctual. You're betting on your ability. Um, the preparation process changes from week to week, as you see a different opponent. As you see what different opponents can be able to do, you look to try to exploit those things defensively. Your defensive coordinator is tasked with making sure you guys are in the best position to be able to exploit the offense that you're going to see from week to week. The speed of the game for defensive guys is more instinctual. You guys clearly set the case. You set the pace as it pertains to the collegiate level. But how has the process changed for you guys as the years have gone along? Being able to be prepared from week to week, opponent to opponent. You guys have a tough out, you know, out of conference schedule again this season, like you did the previous season in the pre in the season before that. How does that process change? How has it matured almost uh, as you guys have gotten older in this system, more mature, been around your coaches a little bit longer? How has that process matured for you guys on the defensive side of the ball? So if you can start it off. Um, you know, what I say, you know, just, you know, me getting older, um, you know, coming from high school, like the rest of the offensive guys say, you know, you know, you were just more dominant, you know, just better than a lot of guys. So, you know, one thing, you know, I had to definitely take pride in, you know, coming to college was watching film. Um, you know, once my first year playing, you know, just I was watching film, but I won't really – Getting, I won't really comprehend it. And what I mean by that is like, I maybe I might watch the games, but what I'm looking for, I didn't really know how to watch film. So it was just, you know, the older I got, you know, my reaction time and things like that was quicker because I'm recognizing formation, you know, what they doing on PN10, uh, what they like to do on third down, what's their route concepts. And now, you know, mm-hmm. starting um, in 2022, and when we had our new defensive back coach, Kashawn Jarrett, you know, man, he broke all that stuff down, man. You know, he kind of make it easy. For us, you know, to be honest, you know, we meet early in the morning. We're the only group that meet early in the morning, then meet later on the day. And, you know, you know, just sacrificing, you know, just spending, you know, maybe 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes, you know, a night just, you know, watching films on team. And so now it's easy. So when that receiver lined up tight split, okay, is he going to crack me or he going to run a crosser? Just things like that just help you just react fast, man. So the older I got, it just, it just helped me. So then it helped me play fast. So then it's like, okay, man, how's Kenny? Knowing they gonna do this, how's Kenny reading the screen from back here? It's just, you know, just the more film you watch, just the faster you react, and you know, it really helps and makes a lot of plays. That's a pro answer. That's a pro answer right there, KG. That's a pro answer. Uh, uh, Carson, man, what you, what you think? I know that I know that you would probably say ditto to the same thing that KG said, but from your own perspective, where have you seen the game be able to evolve and change? You you from Detroit? You from the D? Well, I know a lot of guys that come out of Detroit that are, are strong, solid guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball, coming out of the Motor City. When you got to Howard and you've had now some changes at the position coach level, you've gotten into this film session from week to week. How has this thing helped you, man, as the game has kind of slowed down to you, but more you can utilize your instincts and the things that you've been able to learn since you've been there? Uh, You know, I'd definitely say film, too, because, you know, um, that's one thing Coach KJ taught us, uh, like film, like knowledge is power, you feel me? So if you know what the office is going to do, it make your job 10 times easy. But one thing I say that's different is communication. Like, you know, coming mm. in, you know, you're a young guy, you don't really, like, 
you don't you don't got that voice yet to where you speaking up and you confident what your assignment is and the whole defense as a like as a unit. So I think like getting experience, you know, and becoming like an OG, I think it's just communication is a big piece. Like if everybody on the same page, you feel me, no matter what go wrong, you know, at least we all on the same page and we can, you know, bend but don't break. Not even bend, but just stay firm and stay united. Like that's one thing that we focus on on defense is just, you know, having that one unit, being that one sound unit, moving together, all 11 hats to the ball. Like that type of communication and that drive, like get to the ball and then instilling that into the young guys. Like I yeah. think that's going to bring us to that next level. That's what my next question was going to be. It's about, you know, culture starts, culture generally in a program starts with a group of guys like yourself who establish that culture who do not take ex excuses, don't accept excuses from the room. Each one of you guys represent a different room as far as on the offense or defense side of the ball, not accepting excuses, not letting guys be late, not letting the small things go by the wayside and just, you know what, it's okay, don't worry about it, you'll do it better next time. When you start talking about this next batch of young men that's coming into this program, they do they understand the standard that you for as well as the rest of your group and a lot of the guys that came a year after you guys do they understand the standard that you guys have laid down that you now accept it as a, a, a no nonsense no excuse standard and how have you been able to see these young guys respond to the standard that you guys are setting down in your receive in the receiving room or the running back room or the db room respectively how have they responded to that being on a fresh on a brand new campus at 17, 18 years old or transferring in from another program that might not have that type of culture. Um, I can answer that. Uh, you know, you know, we talk about this um, all the time, you know, no shade to, you know, the guys that were older than us, but you know, we really didn't have no OGs, you know, they kind of threw us in the fire. So we kind of had to, you mm. know, really learn, really learn the hallway, you know, things like that. We were learning how nobody kind of gave us no advice, you know, things like that. So, like I said, they kind of, you know, the coaches threw us in the fire. You know, we played pretty early. But, you know, I definitely say our young guys, you know, they do, you know, believe in the standard because that's – since they've been here, that's all they know. You know, you got guys, you know, since 2022 who, you know, end up joining our football program. We've been – we've just been successful, you know. So they've seen the hard work. They see guys put extra work in, you know, after a workout, finish with core, or we might do hurdles for mobility, things like that. Like, they, they, they see it. And so it's like, you know, after a while, you know, a lot of guys, you don't even got to really talk about it, but, you know, they'll just follow you, you know. So I'm not really the guy. Well, I will say I am kind of vocal. I'm lying on that. I will say I'm kind of vocal. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll go off on a young guy, too. You know, if you lead or whatever, they, they make me the punisher. But I would say, you know, you don't really got to talk about it. You know, they're, if they respect it and they see, you know, you're doing right and you're leading by example, I mean, I'm pretty sure they'll follow you. So. That's really the main thing. And then really, like I say, Coach KJ, you know, him coming from Virginia Tech and, you know, him telling his story, the guys who he was behind, and he was like, man, you know, young guys, y'all just follow the OGs and, you know, let them lead you and things like that. So that kind of, you know, started the wave around that. So, Like like KJ was saying, we all kind of got different styles of leadership. So I feel like that's what makes us such good, you know, OGs, so that, you know, so to say. But KG, more of a vocal guy. I'm more of a guy, like, I'll pull you aside. And talk to you, Carson. He kind of he gonna pull you to the side, and talk to you, and K three kind of more of a you know follow my lead, which is what I like to do. But as the room has gotten younger, I had to talk more. But we all lead differently, so guys can come to us with different things. Like, you know, KG can talk to you, uh, Carson. He'll do what he got to do, however he got to tell you. But we all lead different ways, so guys know I ain't gotta be worried about getting yelled at or getting snapped on. Like we got you, but it's just different guys you come to because we're gonna lead you different ways. Last year, a year ago, uh, Howard University football were a few points uh, away from HBCU national title, uh, something that has eluded Howard for quite some time. Um, how have you guys used that ball game back in December to motivate you and springboard you into spring ball, um, and which is going to also springboard you uh, into the 2024 season? One thing I say is just by like, like, like taking that, that passion, and that feeling that you felt at the end of that game, and realizing that the season don't start, you feel me, in August, or that game don't start in December. It start like right now, like it start during spring ball. I start doing that first winter workout. Like you gotta take that same passion and that every day, like treat every day as its own day. Like as soon as you wake up, 
put a hundred into that date because you know how that pain feel when you when you came up short like that. So don't think about the next day. Don't think about the day before that. Just think about the 24 hours you get when you open your eyes. So that's one thing, like, I feel like all of us, especially in this group, that we take, like, full control of, full control of 100%. Like, I feel like we put in extra work, more than extra work. We go above and beyond to make sure we don't feel that again. Case, did you have something that you wanted to say? To say Oh yeah, uh, like Carson pretty, uh, pretty much said. I mean, uh, I remember after the uh, celebration, but I mean, I mean, it hurt it. It hurt it. It hurt it really bad. Uh, we came up short, and um, I remember after the game, just looking at all the seniors. Um, I just felt like uh, we just let them boys down because it was just some of some of the, them guys' last game and everything. And um, just pretty much like Carson said, just waking up every day, just keep just not thinking about it, just keeping it in the back of your mind. And um, just like Coach Scott just preached to us, um, it's going to be hard to get back to that point. Um, like KG mentioned, everybody going to give us their best shot. And uh, we just going to uh, wake up every day and just grind and just just to get back to that moment. Jared, I have a question for you. How can you – can you talk about the friendly competitiveness in the running back room? I mean, y'all had the best running back room in HBCU football last year. It's probably going to be that way again this year. How do you guys balance between wanting to shine and, and get your reps and then also doing what's best for the team? Uh, yeah, we, I got to agree with you on that. I feel like we definitely have one of the best rooms. And, uh, you know, the competitiveness is what makes us go so hard because the summertime, you know, springtime, coach, our coach, he's real big on ain't no favorite. Don't nobody got no spot. So whoever balling, that's who's going to get the ball. Whoever balling in springtime, whoever balling in summertime, that's when we get the most majority of the reps. You know what I'm saying? He take care of it, but at the same time, he know we all competing. So that's the thing that keeps us all going. Uh, last year with Ian, you know, shout out to Ian. He got his pro day tomorrow. Hope he do great numbers. I know he is. I think he'll run like a 4 3 4 4 My dog do it. But we uh, we definitely compete, and that's the thing that made us so good because in the summertime, in the springtime, the, the parts that y'all don't see, we going so hard. For and at the same time, we – you know, everybody wants the ball, so you got to do what you got to do to make sure you get the ball. Because if you don't, you having a bad day, next man up. And then you got to sit on the side and cheer your dog on. But that's the cool part. Everybody cheer each other on. I ain't really no hating going on in that room. Oh, that's wonderful. I have a fun question. This is kind of a not X's and O's question. Of all of your, all of the MEAC, who would you say is y'all's biggest rival? I'm gonna say Norfolk. I'm gonna say Norfolk State. Why? I'm gonna because say you Norfolk. from seven five. I'm from the seven five, so I take it personal. And my pops from the Norfolk State, so like I be want to beat them every time I can get like every chance I get. I ain't gonna lie to you. And then they ain't offer me, so it was just like, damn, I'm right here in y'all backyard. Y'all didn't offer me, so I'm not gonna lie. I take them. I take them personal. Yeah, I say, but I don't really look at. I mean, I mean, I guess you know, Hampton's that rivalry for sure, but. And me, that wise, I say Norfolk. I don't rival Norfolk. Yeah. I think, I think our new like should be rival would be Central because of all the like off season. You know, the Coach Oliver with everything he said. You know, I respect the Coach Oliver, but in the off season, yeah, he had some words for it, and I think that he created a little rivalry right there. So shout out to him for that. Bulletin board. <laughs> Who else want to go? <laughs> <laughs> I know one team hasn't been mentioned, but I'll I'll keep my cool. Who else want to talk about? Who do y'all think is our rival? I don't really see like teams as no rival. You feel me? I'm trying to win all the games. Perfect answer. <laughs> hey man, hey man, we we ain't no rivals, man. We ain't rivals. I think I think here, here's the thing that I think is is great though, right? For a long time in this conference, and y'all gotta keep in mind, man. I, I played in this conference from 2009 to 2012, right? So for a long time in this conference, there's always been a battle of the teams that's at the top. And when you have that type of parity and that's, I mean, just the quality of football, you look at what y'all did this season, you look at what you guys were able to accomplish this season, um, you look at what Central has been able to accomplish, you know, during their seasons, man, it's natural for that to happen. One of the things that I think is going to happen this year, though, and this is a testament to, to everybody, is it's so many good teams in the conference now. 
So the competition in this conference, it only makes the conference better. It only makes the conference better. Dog, dog people going to have a hard time coming through the MIAC. That out of conference schedule? Dog, I have every reason in the world to believe y'all beat Rutgers. I don't have no reason to believe you don't. I have every reason in the world to believe you beat Rutgers. I have every reason in the world to believe y'all take care of business against that school in, in Virginia. I got every reason to believe, man, that every single team in this conference, with the exception of, of one or two, that we all know, listen, we all hoping that they come along. And I'm not shaming them in anything of anything like that, but I'm hoping that they, they get it together. But nonetheless, at the top of this conference, it's tough, man. Whether it's y'all, whether it's Central, whether it's Morgan, whether it's South Carolina State, whether it's Norfolk State to KG's point, if Delaware State ever get it together, it, them too. But I'm saying the fact of the matter is that when we look at the programs, it, man, listen, man, I shoot it straight, man. Right? This ain't basketball, man. I shoot it straight. All right? So at the end of the day, though, I think that you guys are as are as, as solid as it gets when it comes to FCS football, let alone HBCU football. I mean, you're coming off a national championship berth. You just got you a couple possessions away from, from really bringing another national championship back to the conference. And I know that's going to motivate you. And what I hope is that it motivates you all the way through from start to finish and that the conference is better when we got this amount of teams being good, man. The conference is better when we got all of y'all, everybody balling, man. I don't got no more eligibility left, man. And, and even if I did, my body could not handle playing the game at, at in this day and age, man. Y'all different types of athletes, man. I'm not even – I wouldn't even try to play this game during this time period. Y'all different. I done seen you on film, KG. I ain't – I'm not catching no slants and got to worry about you or got to worry about Carson coming down here to hit me. No, I ain't doing that. And I ain't playing DB trying to check no Casey – I'm not trying to check no Casey, no one-on-one -on -one in space. And I'm definitely not about to try to tackle no darn Jerry Hunter wide open in space. Hey, y'all done lost y'all mind, dog. This is a different day, dog. I got kids and a wife, dog. Y'all not about to send me to no darn hospital. So all I'm saying is, man, I think that the conference in general, when we have this amount of great quality of football, and this is a, this goes for HBCU football in general, across the board, whether it's MEAC, whether it's SWAC, whether it's the Independents, when we have this amount of good quality football, man, my expectation is that you guys continue to keep doing what you're doing, continue to keep playing the way you plan, keep dominating, man, doing it the way y'all doing it, and stay together. Hold each other accountable. Continue to hold each other accountable. Hold everybody in y'all rooms accountable. And at the end of the day, when they roll that football out, man, y'all go beat who across from y'all except for on one day. That's not how that's going to go. <laughs> And, I want to and, say one thing though. Go ahead. I was just going to say, ahead, I, uh, you know, I totally agree, man. You know, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of guys, you know, be competing with one another, or whatever. But I just feel like, in the, the day, I mean, I feel like the HBC football is all one big family. You know, I got love for uh, Richards. I got love for Khalil. Like, you know, they just great guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm and I just root for, huh? you know, I just. <laughs> This group, you know, for all the HBCU guys, you know, on the pro days, um, you know, everything like that. And, you know, I just pray for success. You know, I'm one of the guys that I show everybody love. You know, even though I be, you know, I hear there be some hate. And I be like, dang, man, come anybody to tell you, man, one of them genuine guys, like I really want everyone to eat, man. Like that, that's something I stand by us and live by. So, you know, I just wanted to say that out there for sure. Salute that, man. Salute that. I, I wanted to say um, one, you guys are awesome. And as a very proud Howard alumna, I don't think you all know um, on the football team, but really for all of Howard athletics, I don't think you guys know like the joy that you've brought Bison Nation, the energy that you've infused into the alumni base, just how special you guys are. And, um, you know, we haven't had this type of energy around athletics in many, many decades. <laughs> Like, I, I really say that decades. And you guys have just really brought such a great energy and spirit to the Bison community. And we love you guys. We're so, so proud of you. Um, congratulations on graduating for the couple of you who are graduating this spring and summer. And also, you know, just keep being you and keep leaning on us as an alumni network to support you guys because we want to support you. 
and we're so proud of you. And you can see that the stands are filled now. We're traveling to games. We're donating money. Like all of that is because of you guys. And so you should feel really, really special about that. And you're so humble, too. I mean, we didn't even talk about Kenny being MEAC Defensive Player of the Year or the Aeneas Williams Award winner. Like, <laughs> I mean, think about that. That didn't come up not once. Just so, so special. You guys are a special group of young men. And um, I honor you today. And I'm so glad you agreed to come on the show. I'll be up there to see y'all soon, man. KG, you always know. I'll be up there to see y'all soon. Casey, uh, this, this summer, we got, to, we got to get on that field this summer. Uh, we get a chance, man. Uh, uh, you, 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 you're a big time ball player, man. Jerry, we got to get on that field, man. Carson, man, we got to get on that film this sometime this summer, uh, and definitely want to make sure you get a chance to chop it up with BJ, um, KG, and B, uh, KG and Carson, man. Make sure you guys tap in with BJ. Uh, we, we definitely want to make sure we get on that film, man, and, and just connect, continue to connect the game with y'all generation, man. We we so proud of seeing y'all, man, and how y'all play the game, man. So continue to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, stay focused. Continue to keep doing it the way you're doing it. Keep this accountability thing going. Keep everybody accountable. That includes the young fellas who might not want to do it. Uh, and hold yourself accountable more than anything, man. Finish the semester strong. We'll see you guys on the other side of it. Uh, this is HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Simpson. We'll be right back after this commercial break. When we come back, we got the crew and contributors in here. We getting ready to talk spring football. We'll see you guys on the other side of this break. This is HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Simpson. Need to catch up on the news? Head over to hbcunightly.com forward slash news. And check out all the latest news from across the HBCU sports world. Editorial styles, interviews, articles, directly from BJ Jones himself. Anytime, anywhere, real-time news. That's hbcunightly.com forward slash news. hbcunightly.com forward slash news. Real, present, insightful news. The way it should be. All right, Erica, you got you got your... You got your uh... Yeah, opportunity to do your thing. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm surprised, Erica. You didn't do the you didn't do the cheer. Man. You know, you, you know, you Yeah, I know it's coming though. It's, it's, it's a long football season. Oh my God. We got a long time before the football season comes, man. But man, how 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 much of a treat was that, man? To see these young fellas playing the game the way we 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 all talk about playing the game. And and it don't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. We we're looking to bring as many of these young men. Uh, who play this game the way we want the young players, young student athletes. We got ladies playing the game too. We're looking to bring as many of them on here as possible to talk about their experience in real time. They playing right now. We won't want to bring them on just after the fact, after that, after they done playing and try to give them their flowers after they done. We want to bring them up now. And speaking of bringing them up now, let me go ahead and bring everybody up. We got the whole squad here tonight, man. We got yeah. everybody up here joining the night. We got everybody up this joint tonight. This feel like old school HBCU nightly. Now I want I want to make sure I preface this. I want to make sure I preface this now. This time last year, it was all audio. We didn't roll it out the way we rolled this one out. Everybody's everybody's network. I know everybody has their own network, their own shows. We didn't have this this conundrum of all of the shows and this caveat and, and plethora of all the shows and all the perspectives. Uh, we didn't have everybody here, you know, sometime. Then we tried to smush all of the darn season prognostications into one night. If y'all remember this time last year, we tried to do all of the predictions in one night. And I think we was on till about one o'clock in the morning People Bruh. was on there yawning. <laughs> I think BJ ended up falling asleep. BJ like, fell asleep about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we was on two, two in the morning. Two, two in the morning. Yeah, we, we were two in the morning. You're right. Two. We was on to two in the BJ morning. BJ was on by 11 o'clock. That was a this wild time, night. This time, we're doing it different. And I think that the way that we're doing it this time helps for everybody to understand. So let me make sure I preface this before I go around and everybody do their first 10. HBCU Nightly does this. We did this last year. We're doing it again this year with our partners, our crew, our contributors, uh, our network partners that come from other networks and other shows. This is a panel of people we have a tremendous level of respect and admiration for. We can take all of the. Some of y'all going to feel some type of way regardless. 
everybody can't go undefeated, y'all. All right? I want to make sure y'all hear everybody can't go undefeated. You're going to feel some type of way. You're not going to like who we say you we think you're going to lose to. You're not going to like who we think we say you're going to win against. You're not going to like who we say in the end result what we got as a prognostication as a group. But the way we eliminate the individual bias is by doing it this way. Every single person on this show, when we do this series, has their own individual one-off voice. And they get a chance to say whether they think that this game is a win or a loss for this particular program versus that particular program. We're doing it different. We're going to do three to four programs a week when we break this down. We're going to go through their schedules. We're going to say whether or not we think it's a win or a loss on that schedule. We'll keep track of it like we did last year so that when we get to another program's game, if we've already covered that game, if it's a win or a loss, we'll know how we need to vote it. But it'll be voted on from us. And here's the beautiful thing. Everybody that watches these shows, you get an opportunity to give us your opinion too. Now, that's not going to sway our opinions, our personal prognostications. Well, it that's not going to change what we think. <laughs> It won't have any bearing on the results of this thing from a win-loss record. But the biggest difference is we're going to put it out there so people can see. We're going to put it out there so people can see. We ain't got time to be no haters and no particular programs or none of that. We're going to talk ball from the perspective of everything that makes sense for us, for people who know this game and we understand this game and we cover this game the right way. All right? So you don't have to worry about a room full of MEAC mics. We all understand this game a little bit different. We understand sports a little bit differently than, and than, than the gentleman himself. And so we will break this thing down. And that starts next week. <laughs> but I want to make sure I pass it around so we do first 10. So I'm going to go to my brother BJ Jones. We didn't get a chance to go to the editor's desk, but we will get a chance to go to my brother BJ Jones. First 10, my brother, it's on you. Okay, this will be a little bit different because I'm actually going to talk about the sport of basketball. Oh, man. Um, last night, man, Langston um, had an opportunity to bring home a national championship um, at the NAIA level. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I was very excited. Uh, with 55 seconds left to go, I had already started celebrating. Um, I felt like, man, it was just a foregone conclusion. We will close this thing out. And then Langston, ha. Uh, yeah. 10 to 1 going down the stretch. They lose it. But still successful season by the length and lines. We're talking about a program who was one of the worst programs in the country just two years ago. Uh, where that program has come in, in two, three years is nothing short of amazing. And I think that the Lions of Langston, if they're able to keep their coach there, I know, fam, you might be snooping around the barnyard a little bit. Um, I think that they'll be back in this position a year from now. So with that being said, go Lions. Let's go to my sister, Eski, for our first 10. E, so you. No, that was really such a joy to talk to those four guys. I'm such a big fan. Um, I also want to shout out Banks. Not one mention of Morgan State today during the interview. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and also shout out to the Howard University men's basketball team. I got to go to Dayton for the first four. We came up just short, um, but still a lot of upside to the program. And we're still super proud of them and the women's basketball team for all that they accomplished this year. Now it's on to softball. And um, we know how that's going for everybody right now. Well, man, ain't nothing wrong with us. Let me go to my brother G. -ski. Let me go to G. G, first 10, my brother. How you feeling tonight, man? I am. I'm awake. That's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Spring ball, man. I wait 4.30, wake up every day. 4.30, Jeez. wake up. So I work from 4.30. You never, you really never off the clock as a coach. Facts. I pretty much, I'm up at 4.30 every day. Um, but it's a blessing, man. I, Lincoln got, Lincoln, I'm not going to talk too much, but. We, we look we look good. <laughs> we look really good. And I'm I'm very excited like what we got going on here at Lincoln. So just stay tuned for that. And let's talk about some players. And I it's I wanna get I wanna get into these players real quick. So let's get these first 10 wrapped up, G. Yeah, 
That's, that's Let me go to my brother Zach. Zach, first, first oh, ten. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Zach. First ten. Man, I like I'm like G, man. I don't have much to say. I'm just ready. To, I'm just so glad to talk about football, man. I'm I I'll watch basketball. I'm not really a basketball guy, so now I'm I'm just ready to lock into spring practice, the draft, UFL, all that stuff, man. Let's go to my brother Doc Holiday joining us uh from from Texas. From Texas. Doc, what's good, my brother? Man, I'm good, y'all. Uh blessed and highly favored, blessed to be above ground as always. Uh, been battling uh tonsillitis for this past past couple of days, so that's why, I, yeah, that's the reason why I'm at home, man. You know, I feel like uh, when you're in your mid 40s, bro, you feel everything <laughs> about your body telling you to sit down and stuff like that. Um, to, to talk about the, the basketball game last night with Langston, uh, I got on, even though it was my Detroit Tigers hat. Got the orange up in there to support uh, Coach Wright and the Langston Lions up in Oklahoma. Um, great season that they had this year. Uh, the last, like I said, last 55 seconds, I wanted to throw everything at my TV um, last night, but um, it was a great game and stuff like that. But we back to it. So, Back to talk about football. That's some, you know, that's a 24-7, 365 here in Texas. That's what we do. That's what I like to do. I'm like blue. Let's get to it. Let's talk about some football. Speaking of basketball, before we get ready to finish up basketball and get into football, I gotta make sure that my brother Herb gets a chance to do his first 10. Her first 10, my brother. Hey man, first and foremost, man, um big shout out to Coach Chris Wright and the Langston Lions, man. Um, you know, I, I think I can safely speak for everybody that's been following your team uh, during the season that, um, you know, we were all Langston Lions last night. And the fact of the matter is, is that um, sometimes the best team doesn't win. You know, in my opinion, I think you, I mean, you guys were the best team I've seen at the NAIA level the entire season. You know, Freed Hardeman, was able to pull it out last night, but um, you know, I mean, you guys, uh, you guys carried the HBCU nation on your back, and and did a good job of it the entire season. Um, on that note, I want to make an announcement about my show, uh, the season finale of HBCU Who's Weekly. On Sunday, I got a special guest, and that special guest is none other than head coach of Langston, Chris Wright. So. Mm. If you are able to tune in um, on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please do. We're gonna. This is gonna be a celebration of the HBCU basketball season, a celebration of you know what teams like Langston and Norfolk, who by the way you know you know got got gold tonight in the CIT. They're the CIT CIT champs for 2024. Shout out to Robert Jones. Um, you know we're just gonna break down the season, and I mean. Um, you know, shouts out to everybody that, um, you know, that supported HBC Weekly, HBC Hoops Weekly, supported us as HBC Nutley folks um, during the basketball season. And this has been a whirlwind for me. Um, as you can see, you know, brother got the little bags under his eyes. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's, been a, it's been a wrap, man, and I, and I love it. You know, we're here to stay. Um, uh, Outside of that, yeah, football's back. Josh, you know, Josh gets to talk his back. You know, he, he gets to say to me, talk about basketball. Better put that basketball. Speaking of football, there's 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 uh, generally no person that's more entertaining when we start talking ball than this gentleman here, man. Uh my brother's busy. Uh the lightness is high tonight. Busy, all right, dog. As soon as we start talking football, that boy like he ready. Busy. What? First game right now. <laughs> you look mad. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. That man is upset. So we are oh, my are God. We, are we done or are we finished? Like, <laughs> that's my damn show. Start the damn show. <laughs> oh, man. Let me bring my sister Tandia up. She just can't hear. She's clearly it's still daytime in 
the light is still out where she is. That's wild. Uh, I, am in, I am in the I am in She in the car with the AC on because it probably was 70 no, 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 some I'm, degrees I'm, today. I'm, it's, I'm, no, I don't have the AC on because it's actually a little chilly outside, but I'm in the valley. Really? I'm about to leave. I'm in the valley. I'm about to leave in a few minutes. I just thought I'd hop on and say, what's up? How y'all be? I'll be listening from my phone because I have to drive a 40-minute drive back to North Hollywood and then a 23-minute drive to Hollywood, to Hollywood. So I'll be in the car. Co- yeah. Yeah. Hollywood! That girl, that girl living in Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh, she like got it. stuck like on the freeway. That girl got like money, it. boy. She living in Hollywood. It's like it's not, I don't have money. I'm, I'm, I don't have money. I've had a, I had a uh, very eventful weekend. Um, and so I'm just trying to recover and, you know, connect you guys. Try to connect some of the... Josh, you know... So this they didn't is- say nothing! I didn't see Don't that. get a look. I don't want that look to be screwed for with nobody. I had a beautiful weekend as far as I I helped produce an event this weekend out here in LA and was definitely in the building with some movers and shakers within the industry. And so some of those people, I'm definitely trying to see if we can uh on the HBCU th- HBCU side of things, uh, you know. Get some get some stuff shaken. We have a lot of people that were in the room that were HBCU grads, Morgan State, NCCU, definitely a bunch of Howard folks in there. Some oh, NCAT people was in the room. So, yeah. you know. Was was Puffy there? Was 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 Puffy there? Because we ain't nobody saying Puffy. Um, he was no. Yeah, the most distinguished honorary graduate. He's a Howard guy. Yeah, the most distinguished Howard guy. <laughs> no, the power people that I'm power people that I'm talking about. Power, oh, he is a he is. So nobody was in the room. So nobody was in the room taking that, taking that. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, no Hey y'all, hey listen, y'all gonna take that. One. Hey, however, but, I do want to. However, for. Before I want to hop, before I say this and hop off, I do want to say this: If you are a tequila drinker, oh God, hold on, this is where I'm going. There is a, it is it is black owned, black women own it. Uh, it is called Pronghorn. Send me your bottle. That own it are HBCU grads. I had that tequila this weekend, the Reposado. It is amazing. Send um, the bottle. <laughs> Dia, Dia, I, don't even have the bottle in the car with me because I was going to take it. It has to be able, um try it today at work. But Dia Sims and Aaron J. Hall. Um, Dia is a graduate of Morgan State University. The National Treasure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't know exactly <laughs> where. I'm not really sure where Aaron graduated from, but I'm trying to figure that out. But their um, spirit company is Pronghorn. Really, really, really great tequila. Um, Dia Sims is also a partner with Lobo. She is the chairwoman of Lobos, I believe. I don't want to. She is. Yep. She's the chairwoman. Yep. She is. Chairwoman of Lobos. And so, and Erin also was, she was the past CMO at Lobos, but of course now they have prong corn together and let's support our black women from our HBCUs in the spirit industry. They are definitely trying to diversify the spirit industry and push for more black people to be in that space. So that's my little tidbit. Then my little shout out for today. I'm gonna that's, you the bi- that's, hey, that's the business. That's bottle. the business ambassador. That's the business ambassador of all things HBZ. Y'all don't understand. Y'all got two sisters on this screen right here who are moving and shaking the game in ways and they doing it from two different coasts. I'm not going to get into that tonight because we, we talk. We talk connected. Before. That's the word. Prong connected. Horn. Prong <laughs> horn. Diana, prong horn. I'll prong horn. Prong horn. And, and, uh, and AJ. Yes, we did. We all said, Meow. all right, here we go. All right, Tandia, be safe on that road. All right, we'll see you next week when you're more sitting still doing your thing. All right, here we go. Ain't no time to waste. Here we go. <laughs> we going on the defensive side of the ball first. Morgan State. Since y'all say I'm biased to offense anyway. 
we go on the defense side of the ball first, and we're gonna go somewhere. Morgan State. <laughs> like, why are we? Don't this? This. Why TV. are you holding it, G? Honey's gonna be disrespectful to the two defensive folks that was just on the stage. Like, Kenny is obviously a <laughs> Kenny is obviously a top prospect, but I love Kenny. But Kenny, no. Eric Hunter, Elijah Williams. <laughs> so, I mean, is anybody gonna disagree? No, we're not disagreeing, but but I mean, but I mean, come on, guys! Like, I'm not good with you. Listen, point. football is football is three dimensional. You know what I mean? It's, you know, okay, eleven yeah. guys on the ball. Eleven guys on the ball. I mean, Kenny, the top DB, one. That's one dimension. That's third level. Second level, Eric yeah. Hunter. First level, Elijah Williams. There we go. Offense. Mm. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I do. I, I really do. I hear you. I respect it. Right? I, I respect it. Right? But there's some other guys in some other places that absolutely need to be involved in this conversation. So I'm going to go to my brother BJ Jones first. BJ, guys not named Elijah Williams. Let me give you Elijah Williams, KJ. Kenny Kelly. He said guys, guys not, named not named Elijah, Elijah Williams. Guys, not named Kenny Gallup. Who else are you expecting to see a big season from on the defensive side of the ball that's inside the HBT football world? Uh, probably Kelby Givens, Southern University. Uh, defensive end, if you look at him statistically, um, had a, a good enough stats to be SWAC Defensive Player of the Year. Um, I think Gerald, uh, one of our shows, uh, the latter part of last year, made a compelling argument. Uh, for for Mr. Givens, new new face in a in a in a new place. Rico Dozier was at Arkansas Pine Bluff a year ago, all conference player. He's at Alabama State now, um, and he's going to be teaming up with Marcus Cunningham, uh, who was one of the, the the better linebackers of the conference. Look out for Rico Dozier. Alabama State has to replace. Um, uh, Bubba, but the, the two guys they have, Dozier and Cunningham, look out for those young men. Zach, when you look at the landscape here on the defensive side of the ball, one particular group, one particular position group on the defensive side of the ball stands out more than others. Uh, talk a little bit about this position group and some of the guys you think may be special coming into the 2024 football season. Yeah, I mean, listen, G hit the first one. Elijah Williams is the first one that comes to mind. I, I think BJ did a good job there. Givens, too. I think he had a strong argument for SWAC Defensive Player of the Year last year. But And we went down all these edge rushers and didn't mention the FCS Defensive Player of the Year and Terrell Allen, who's mm. also coming back for Tennessee State, almost 30 tackles for loss. Mm. You know, what, 15 sacks. Super undersized, though. So he's not probably a NFL draft prospect, but he's probably going to have one of the craziest years next year because you also got to remember next to him is a guy who was supposed to have a season a big season was Jalen Bell who got hurt early last year so you put a dynamic yep. defensive tackle next to Terrell too so they're gonna they're gonna I think they're gonna work really well off each other and then also to Malachi Bailey at Alcorn State back to back mm. seasons with double digit tackles for loss nine plus sacks each year coming back to Alcorn State again so I, I think all those guys have an argument to be some of the top edge rushers. And then you got Anthony Dunn Jr., who, let's be honest, we've talked about Aneem and his NFL draft prospect. Anthony Dunn gave him fits in the Celebration Bowl and really came into his own throughout last season. I think Anthony Dunn Jr. for FAMU is going to be a guy to watch at the edge rusher spot, too. I want to see him take the next step in his game. So I wouldn't put him in the conversation with Elijah yet. I wouldn't put him in there with Terrell or anybody. But I think Anthony Dunn's due for a huge season this year. Relatively speaking, uh, the DB side of this uh, is a little bit more uh, sparse than previous years. Uh, but we do have some guys on the DB side that stand out not named Kenny Gallup. Mm -hmm. Gerald, the DBs that we know that are going to stand out, right, the ones that we know, and we have an expectation that these young men will have a good 2024 campaign Talk about a couple of these guys that we know from a DB perspective that we know can end up exciting some people that can make some changes and make some differences. And I, I see my brother Banks down there kind of licking his chops, pause. But 
<laughs> he wants me to say young boy, and I get it. I love Prevard. I do. But Robert McDaniel. Thank you. Mm. Lockdown. Boy, Lord lockdown. Mercy. Lord Lord lockdown, mercy. right? Lord Six mercy. two, 200 plus pounds. <laughs> Corner, you know me. You know I'm biased. So once you over six foot at corner or DB, you're already on my list. So then I just got to see if you actually, you know, can move and all that other stuff. But that boy, he is gonna be a. He's gonna be. He is a the new age nickel. He is six two, two ten plus. He probably put on some more weight and might be a will linebacker. But he play outside corner. He plays inside a nickel. The kid. I'm watching the Jackson State tape. I was just watching it yesterday, man. He was killing. Oh, he was killing Jackson State. But he was actually at Jackson State with the Alcorn, then he came back. So I guess he wanted to come back home, which is fine. Love his game. Uh, Burgess, uh, James Burgess from uh, Alabama State. It yep. seems like Alabama State has a thing for tall corners, and he's going to get them all to play professional football. And we go out that he had Keenan Isaac. Now we got Mikey Victor, who I've been told if he doesn't get drafted, it will literally be like a catastrophe. So I think he did everything he's supposed to do at Alabama Pro Day. And now we got James Burgess. He's six foot two, about 190 pounds, rangy, long arms. That is the Alabama State model. If you're not six foot and up, you're not playing corner at, at Alabama State. And that's okay. Uh, we know Kenny Gallup, of course. Carson Hinton is another top nickel guy. Uh, who else? I mean, well, uh, could we? is Khalil Baker uh, a graduate of uh, North Carolina Central? He is a graduate, but what? For the sake of this, he will be playing at Elon next season. So <laughs> you, don't, you don't you don't count our, uh, you don't count yeah. the. Okay. Well, let me just. Throw I, my I'm, I'm also I'm also not including Jason Chambers in this, who I think would be has an opportunity to make it to the next level. He's at Appalachian State. I'm not including either of those guys. So just to be fair, so I'm being fair. I'm not including either of those guys. But well, I'm, a, mm -hmm, I'm put out. Go ahead, Teron go ahead. Mallory, Teron Mallory okay. from North okay. State. Who led the conference in turnovers but didn't get all Miak. But the two guys he played better with on his team got Nasty. all Miak. Nasty. Miak, let me do the voting because you can <laughs> y'all killing me. All right. Y'all need help. That is crazy. They the kid led the con first of all, Norfolk State runs man coverage like 90 plus percent of the time. So the fact that this kid is getting Multiple turnovers, multiple turnovers. Led the conference in turnovers. He didn't even get all first team or second team. It's just, you know, but I'm glad Miak took out that third team because it's only 16. So how you look having a third team, or all third team and a team that only had a conference that only has 16. So that's fine. Uh, Teron Mallory is a guy that you should be looking for for the Nias Williams Award. He was a semifinalist last year. Um, and I got to shout out my my youngin at, uh, at Lincoln. I got to do it because he gets overshadowed because no one throws to him. And I told people this last year. No one throws to Ronte Dunbar. They don't throw to him. He nobody throws to him. He had ten targets last year. Ten. Hmm. Ten in ten games. There's a reason for that. I know everybody loved Willie Drew, but he got targeted over almost a hundred times. You wonder why? He was in the boundary. And guess what? D two quarterbacks can't throw to the field. So what you gonna do? Get all the targets. So guess what we're doing. Hey, Ronte, go take your butt to the boundary. Oh, he gonna get his picks this year. He didn't get a lot of stats, but I'm telling you, Ronte Dunbar is five foot of 10, five foot 11, 180 pounds. He's a kick returner, punt returner, and he can play the nickel and he play outside corner. He doesn't get beat deep. He's a sticky. I'm trust me. I, I wouldn't lie to you. And I'll just for just for uh, Markham, just for Markham, Carl, Carl Vansky, the C, the Seuss. That's just how you pronounce it. When he's locked in, he's the best corner at SCS. When he's locked in, so we just need him locked in. Okay, okay, Markham, you good? He pass out. He's been holding his breath for about <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> he was holding his breath. <laughs> I, I would be remiss. I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention uh, two guys. Uh, one guy, Kendall Bowler, is back next year. From what I've seen, uh, you know, down at FAMU. Uh, and I like the way, I, yeah, yeah. I, I like the way he plays the game, man. I really do. I like the way he plays the game. It's gonna be interesting to see if his skill set can transfer and transition to the pro level to the next level. But at six feet, you know, I think he may have put on a little bit of weight this offseason at a buck ninety. I think is where is where they probably want to land him at six yeah. feet, buck ninety. He can move in and out of space. He's got good 
good hip movement, um, and, and he's got good faith, a good footwork. Um, I haven't seen him make a lot of mistakes, but when he does make mistakes, sometimes they are exasperated mistakes, and they end up causing big time plays. And so, I, what I'm hoping is that he turns it around. Um, so I did want to make sure I add Kendall Bowler to this list, and then I also want to make sure I add uh, Tez Mansfield to this list as well. Uh, I'm expecting a big season from Tez this season. Um, inside, it's it's what, Jerry? What's wrong, Jerry? You the froze. I think Tez Lincoln. Is back? Yeah, Tez back. Oh, oh, that changes everything. Well, we got. I got to go back to my my notes then. Sorry, I thought that boy was gone. All right, we good. <laughs> now, Tez, now Tez back. Now Tez back. But hey, y'all didn't hear that here on HBC nightly. Y'all didn't hear that. Oh, I love that kid. Jesus, I thought he was gone. Oh, man. Tis is back. Tis is back. Josh, I want to say something. Go ahead, Doc. Um, yeah, so even though he only played eight games and he kind of bust out on the scene, like, in the middle of the season for us, I would say uh, B.J. Washington, I mean, he was, to me, he was an emerging safety as far as a, a, a cover safety. Uh, had three interceptions on um, – Last season before he uh, broke his foot, uh, his ankle last year. But I think he was on, in, in effect, I think he was on pace to get like at least uh, to have five at the end of the season. So he would have been uh, top of the list with with most of the, the uh, safeties in uh, HBC football, especially in the FCS. Um, great, great point. Great point. Great point. Markham, uh, anything that you would like to add? I know that you got some. <laughs> Listen, I try to make sure I'm being strategic about when we go to you because I know who you really want to say and the things that you want to say. Uh, we going to go to you either way. Markham, anything that you would like to add to this list on defense side? I mean, I think, by the way, um, I have no problem with the players at the school in D.C. because they – I was once to them. So, like, they know the game. They know the lifestyle. They know what it takes to be a winner. And they articulated themselves in a manner which was was beautiful to see as young black men. So, you know, salute to Carson. Um, salute to KG. Salute to Casey and um, and, and uh, Jay Hunter. But uh -oh. it's the fans. <laughs> <laughs> I went three and one against. Dang. I couldn't stand them. I, oh, oh, oh. the way. I, I should have gone four and oh. I wanted to punish them every time. I, I want listen, listen. there's nothing like <laughs> seeing a sea of blue and red just quiet and miserable. There's nothing like it. It brings me sweet joy. Now I digress, okay? Because because this conversation is about you know best DBs. Now y'all bringing up all these great names, but there's a kid in the Morgan State defensive backfield standing at six two and a half, six three, approximately two hundred and five, two hundred ten pounds. And he was a true freshman last year. He goes by the name of Jason Prevard. In every statistical category that counts as for DBs or whatever have you, he finished top 30 in the FCS. He finished as an FCS All-American. Y'all, listen, I don't understand how we don't give him credit. We gave Jason Chambers credit. We gave the year before that, Khalil Baker his credit. We gave Kenny Ellis his credit last year. You know, like we give everybody their credit. But now when it comes to us, the national treasure, us. God's defense. Okay. No God's no. defense. No what? Don't worry about it. Did God tell you that? God, yes, Lord. Yes, He did. He couldn't have. He yes, he did. Yes, he did. I think you need to go back and read your Bible. You need to go no, back and read no, your no. Bible. No way. Not no the way. Bible, bro. <laughs> wait, 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 no, no part. Hold on. No. Hold on. Wait, we want to. We want to try. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Good. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay. He just talked to me right now. He said November 23rd is going to be an ass whooping. That's what he said. Oh, and, November 23rd. And Banks, I, lo I love you, bro, but we, we got we to try to stay away from the whole uh, 
God told us this narrative when oh, it comes yeah, to HBCU football. Please, football. It's the truth. please, it's, please, it's, please, it's, please, it's, please don't. It's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the, Lord did, the Lord did not use profanity to talk about that. I'm, I'm just saying, so, man. That, that's a, that's a rabbit hole that we don't want to go down. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Herb, any, Herb, any additional guys you want to add to the defensive side before we get ready to go up to the office? Nah, nah, man. I think BJ was pretty solid in his assessment earlier. Um, I know just speaking in terms of Alabama State, man, um, the only thing I can tell you is that um, the system that's there, um, that Coach Rob has there is – it's ridiculous. The kids that are coming in, there's some freshmen and some you know newcomers to the program that I can't really um, speak to right away. Uh, but let, I'll just say that if the Alabama State defense doesn't lose a step next season, it won't be a surprise. I mean, there's a lot of really um, good talent that was already there, and there's talent that's coming back, that's at, you know joining the program that's going to be really, really. Um, that's going to be really effective for him. And I think, you know, me personally, I know we're talking about the defensive side of the ball, but when we talk about the offense, um, that's going to be really interesting. And when we get a chance to talk about it, we will we'll talk about it. But um, that's going to make the defensive performance a lot better for Alabama State because it's not going to be the defense, you know, carrying games and, you know, just hoping that we score more than 15 points. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's going to be interesting. You know, that, that's my opinion. Well, I'm glad that you said that because that brings us to a great point. That mm. brings us to a, a beautiful place. Don't say quarterback. The offensive side of the ball. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it now. I said it on MD. I said it on MD earlier this week. And I'm gonna say you can catch on these on Mondays every Monday from nine to well, really <laughs> shameless plug. Nine PM Eastern Standard Time, shameless plug. But please make sure you guys are checking out MD every single week, Monday nights. Yes, nine PM Eastern Standard Time. He on the very entertaining. Very yes, entertaining. Sir. But yes, I sir. said this on I said this on MD, and and I mean this. There is going to be a lot of surprises that's going to come from the quarterback room. And I'm okay with there being some indifference to that opinion, right? Every year, there is a particular position that I try to show people that it's better than what we're giving it credit for right now. And during the spring given, right now, we, we, we have to be honest about what we know right now. What we know right now is what we're saying. But I'm going to make sure I give you guys this warning. I'm going to give you this warning on March 27, in the year of our Lord 2024. <laughs> if you think dun, dun. for one second dun, dun. that the quarterback position dun, dun. Blow this at 1801 Fable Street, Blow this North Carolina. <laughs> Two seven seven one three. Dun, dun. I ain't gonna be ready to go. Dun, dun. Come the first game of the season. Dun, dun. I got something I want to tell you. Listen, but I ain't only talking about us. I ain't only talking about Central because y'all know. I, we, we listen. We love the bias here. We 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 listen to and we love the bias inside of the Mid East and Athletic Conference right now. We know who four of the six starting quarterbacks are right now. We know who four of the six starting quarterbacks are. Hey, listen, I got, I've learned all the time to ignore my brother's face. I have to ignore my brother's face. Oh, oh boy, boy. Uh, in the athletic conference right now, we know four of the starting six starting quarterbacks in the conference. And the only reason why we don't know about the other two is because one of those programs has a brand new head football coach with a brand new system. And the other just graduated a starting quarterback that took them to the celebration bowl. Everybody else know who they got. Everybody else know who their starting quarterback is. 
Norfolk knows who theirs is. Allegedly. No, no, they no, they do. They know they start going back in right now. Yeah, right now, if they play the game tomorrow, Otto Coons is running out of the out of the tunnel as a starting quarterback. Right now, do I think that there's something that can happen during during spring ball and camp to lean toward? And I still cannot get this young brother's name, Gerald. Who was the quarterback when they played against Central for Norfolk? He came in relief. He ended up being the third string quarterback. Is that number eighteen? Jesus. Um, so oh. Ruben Lee. God, we were just talking about. What's what say his, say his name again? Ruben Lee. The kid from FAMU, right? Is it Sap? Sap. 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 Does he have any eligibility left? Is he or is he done? He still got eligibility left. He's still so I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if he comes into camp and surprises people. But the reality is, if Norfolk State played a football game tomorrow, Otto Coons is starting. North Carolina Central. North Carolina Central. If we play the football game tomorrow, Walker Harris is starting for They call me Walker. Del Delaware State had a freshman All-American from from what I'm – a freshman All-American. Last year, he's right? Their, he's their starting quarterback if they play a game tomorrow. He's a gamer. He's, he can play. He's a gamer. He can, play. he can play. It's not so much about him as much as it is – never mind, that great. And if Morgan State played a football game tomorrow, <laughs> they know who their starting quarterback is he's right now. It's you gotta be kidding me. So sure you right lie? now, sure you not lying? South Carolina State, right now, South Carolina State and Howard are the only two right now to where yeah, the mailman is on the quarterback yet. You're gonna see a quarterback battle in that spot in both of those programs. Uh what what I expect, what I expect is some great competition. On the Southwestern Athletic Conference side. We talked about it earlier today. I think it's more like six or seven programs know who their starting quarterback is right now. We do. <laughs> Grambling. Gramble, if Grambling played a football game tomorrow, Miles Crawley is the starting quarterback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If Alabama State played a game tomorrow, let's be honest, Andrew Body is the starting quarterback. Yeah. UAPB is returning a starter. Texas Southern is returning a starter. Mm -hmm. If Jackson State played a football game tomorrow, Jacoby and Morgan is their starting quarterback. Right. Yep. Graham, uh, uh, um, Southern, if Southern played a football game tomorrow, that's my question mark. I don't know, BJ. Ain't no question, B. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm saying, I don't, listen, people need to stop overthinking Noah. I don't know. Understand. They didn't done it for two years now. It hasn't worked. Just stop overthinking. So if it. Southern played a football game, BJ, I'm going to ask you, if Southern played a football game tomorrow, no, no, by now. Your starting quarterback. I hope so. Uh, it, it's it's real close, man. Um, those two true freshmen that came in last year, um, were really really pushing him. Um, and one of them is actually looking better than him right now. Oh man! Oh my God! Man, Did his body get him bodied? Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but we know. Yeah, but we know. We know who the head coach was last year. We know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No disrespect, AOG. No disrespect to Ascot. Come on, man. The Ascot Avenger. Yeah, that Ascot is a little too tight. Yeah, that you had it just wrapped a little too tight. I always like that. It was your decision making process. So I'll say, I guess we got to push in Southern because I don't know. Okay, we don't know who the starting quarterback is at Florida AM. I I don't think anybody here could guess who the starting quarterback well, is. Well, we know what they would say. They said the kid from FAU that they got. I hope he's not. A starter, Man, I, I hope I that ain't. Think, I hope that ain't. I, the guy. I don't think. I don't think that will be. I hope that ain't I, the guy. I'm, I'm like blue. I'm taking my head because I looked at this man. Ooh, I, I, I want him to do it. My fault. Oh, oh, I forgot. Valley, if Valley played a game tomorrow, they know who their starting quarterback is. Yeah, Jerry, yeah. They got two of them. Is that? Oh, don't do that. Don't do that, Doc. Oh. Doc, don't do that. No, seriously, like, they got two. They got two. If they want to go through there, if they got yeah. 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 and they got to Jerry Williams, it'd be the one. I'll be honest with you. Man. Which one of them two? Which one of them two starting right now? I'll it's go with Jerry. It, it's yeah, Ty Jerry. It ties the guy for Valley. I don't think guy. it's any question. Alabama hey. A and M knows who their starting quarterback is. Yeah. Lankford. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lankford. Wait, Lankford still got eligibility? 
I don't he got know one more year. Like, I was like, surprised too. He got he's one like more 31. year. Thirty-one. He old as me. Well, nah, he, he, <laughs> he's, he's what Carson old. Baker was for y'all. Oh God! Oh my God! Oh! Hey, Carson Baker. Hey, Baker. You can say it now, Baker. Hey, Carson was old though. Damn, this man's too work, man. Shout out to the Baker family, though. Shout out to the Baker family. I'm sure. 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 i and finding out and seeing, you know, the, some of the schematic changes that we're going to see from some of these new coordinators. Man, um, say it, man. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it, Herb. You want to know what the scheme is going to look like <laughs> down at Alabama State. Just go, well, and, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I mean, just from what I've seen and heard so far, you know, I think there's going to be some – well, we already know that um, Coach Robinson wants to run the ball. So – Running the ball, Barnett, is, Barnett don't like that though. Barnett don't, don't like in that. In the swag, Barnett don't, don't like that. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna say, swag? I'm just gonna say this from what I'm hearing. You know, I think there's gonna be, uh, I think there's gonna be a mutual balance between the two, and I think so that, that's good. Hey, listen, I, I'm so not gonna put any percentages so, on it. And I'm, I'm just, so I'm just saying. Hey, hey, hold on, Herb. So you're telling me, right? Because I want to ask you this, right? Mm -hmm. Balance in this situation, I'm going to be honest, doesn't really, like, do it for me with Andrew Body. Like, well, I need well, a I get, little I, bit closer to 70-30 with Andrew Body. I ain't going to lie to you. I, 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 I get what you're saying. Ball around, man. I get what you're saying, but given what we have, what we got in some of the signing class that we got, um, and I think BJ can attest to this. Um, we don't got act some like that, Miss Fang. Don't act like <laughs> we got that. some. We got some. Uh, we got some weapons coming in, man. Particularly, particularly in the backfield. Um, you know, if we don't run the ball or we don't make an attempt to do so with the talent that we got back there, is yeah, that would be a note. That would be kind of dash. Y'all gonna be ha Howard two point oh this year? <laughs> nah, I don't think we're gonna be that. But so I, you know. Judge. Uh, like, why would you do that? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Nasty work. Yeah. That was nasty work. There's only three schools in the swag that, that's looking You don't know. You AJ, don't know AJ, love. AJ, AJ, <coughs> AJ. Sit down. Southern, quiet, and Southern don't, right don't now, we, no more. we don't know. No, well, that, that make it four, then. That make it four. So Southern, Prairie View. FAMU and Bethune Cooking. And Bethune. I can almost take a guess at Bethune, though, right? Yeah, because oh, isn't, yeah. Sim, isn't Simmons coming back for Bethune? I'm assuming they're I think he is, though. And they got a transfer from Delaware State. That's yeah. The, so that they brought so in. So if it's Simmons, then what about one who? of them? It's one of them, so I guess I don't know. What about who? Uh, Luke Sprague. Did he leave or was. Did he. Did he bounce out of he was a, I think he was a one I think he was a one year plug and play. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. So right now we know for a fact that we don't know who the starting quarterback is at Prairie View. We don't no. know who the starting quarterback is at we don't necessarily know who the starting quarterback is at Southern. And we definitely don't know who the starting quarterback is at Florida. <laughs> yeah. The competition between that kid from FAU and, and, and Junior. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Who wins that? Who wins that competition? In your opinion, Zach? I, I hope it's Junior. Junior. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's Junior. Like I'm just keeping, bro. I don't think he like that, bro. Oh, I don't think I don't either of them are like that. that. I don't watch like, this film. I don't think he like that. That the kid from FAU. I really yeah. don't. I don't think he like that. Man. Did you watch the film though, Josh? I did. I watched the film. It 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 it. it, it, it Pop out to you, nothing on that film popped out. Nothing on that film. I'm looking at like, I don't see anything that just say, damn, he gonna get Sprague is Sprague is attorney. Now, now I got a real question to ask, and this is, I think, this is more for Zach, Gerald, and BJ. Um, we talk a lot about offenses and stuff and the skill positions, but what do you guys think in terms of some of the lines that we're gonna see, you know, coming back? 
you know, who do you think is going to be effective? Who do you think isn't? Um, because, I mean, you talking about the offensive side of the ball? On the offensive side of the ball. Because, I mean, we talk about, you know, skill positions all day and, and who can execute quarterback. But if you ain't got really good line play, um, you know, it can be dicey. To say it's least. unit, though. It, it, that yeah. that position yeah. is, is, is the full unit versus the yeah. reason why we talk about the individual skill players is because – individual skill players have a better chance of being able to stand out on their own on the film rather than when we talk about offensive line, you start talking about in the trenches. It's 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 the unit. There's a there's a couple of units that I think across the HBTU landscape that are that I think stand above the rest of the group. And then I think it's it's a good group in the middle and then the rest of everybody is down at the at the bottom. I think the first the first offensive line group that jumps out to me is and I know this is where I know you wanted to hear this. I think the first offensive line group that jumps out to me is Alabama State. Alabama State's offensive line group stands out to me. The group stands out to me. Is there one individual guy in the group that I think is is head and shoulders above everybody else? No, but I think the collective group stands out to me. Another group that I think stands out to me, the group that stands out to me, is the Alcorn offensive line. I think that that group stands out to me. Will they have the same cohesion that they've had in years prior? I don't know. I don't know. This is and they don't have feel, the talent, and they don't have the talent in the backfield to to complement to complement yeah, the group. Yeah, 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 G, yeah. G, go ahead, G. I personally, you know, <laughs> I think Jackson State. I think they're also going to beat. Yeah, that's that's where I was going. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know what Jack State line before Alcorn. Yeah, the they're gonna wear you down, yeah. baby. They are they yeah, big. Yeah. Boy, they, they big and they physical. They go, yeah, they big the, and the physical. Only, they, they the only, crazy thing is they we all I think everybody on the O line returned though. Am I correct, Blue? Uh, all but uh Evan, who all but one. All yeah, but one. Deontay Graham's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah Graham's so gone. gone. Yeah. Graham's gone. That's it. Everybody else is back. The, the biggest thing, the biggest thing with Jackson's offensive line, though, is much as they were continuity. Pass blocking is one, but also they got a new offensive line coach too. Is he going to be able to get the most out of that unit? Because their offensive line coach was was really good, and there's a reason he's coaching in South Alabama right now. Well, did they, they repla- did, yeah, did they replace him with a guy who can get the most? Because let's just be honest, those teams that went to the Celebration Bowl, they had quote-unquote talent. The coaching was atrocious no, they were, yeah. for those offensive lines. Yeah. Under, yeah. under the they were terrible, but they, yeah, they just were better. Okay. Now, I, I, I disagree with the thought that FAMU has an offensive line unit that that makes me excited. I'm not they excited had, about one last year. They had they had one. One last yeah, year. They had one. But this they were, year, they I, I, I think quick. that they take the biggest backward step of all of the programs that we think is in this conversation. I think they take the biggest backward step. I will say I think that the South Carolina State offensive line is going to be really good. They brought back oh, everybody yeah. and all of their depth. Oh, no, they South Carolina great. State offensive line is big and they nasty. Yeah, they good. nasty and, and they young. The they got a lot of these guys that's coming back and they all the, they got the camaraderie. The different ha- situation. Yeah, Norfolk go ahead. has some young guys that I like. Norfolk has some young guys who played a good amount of stats last year that if they take a step, Norfolk could have a sneaky good offensive line. Now, I don't know what the unit's going to look like, but if we're talking individuals, they got some guys who have the potential to be all conference level players on the O line. Yeah, Norfolk's problem is I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all, man. When it comes to Norfolk State, if is I know that they are a lot of a lot of the sentiment is that Norfolk State of everybody in the conference should is is projected to be in the top half. But if you didn't get it done with Pooty Carter and the offensive line he had in the spot in the position, guys, I'm just not sure, man. man. I'm not sure. Yeah. They're gonna have to show me. They gonna have to show me. That's one yeah, of them man. teams that's on the bubble for me that they're gonna have to show me. But 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 you're right though, Zach. They got two or three guys on that offensive line that very well could be first team all conference guys. Very well could be first team all conference guys. I'll tell you another unit I'm gonna be actually surprisingly is is going to be all right this year. Tennessee State's offensive line, I think they'll have a pretty solid offensive line this year. Yeah, yeah I agree. Big, big, the unit, they, big and they can move. Big and, and move and they can nasty with it too. And you got to always put A&T because I think they got the best O-line coach 
in like the band. might be the country. This dude been there for I don't know how long he been there, but every year you know they gonna run that run the rock and they always find a way to run the rock. Uh, they all they I, what you <laughs> yo, you can say I I hear you, Josh, but the dude the dude has to do some really good offensive linemen, man. I'm not even gonna lie. To hey, you. hey, I'm, no, hey, disregard me, man. Never mind me. That's kind of how I feel about true, Southern, though. Like, you know like you know Southern, yeah, Southern had a streak there where they had some like really good offensive line units. Like, line. Uh, last year, it took a, a step back, I feel like, compared to what it was the previous two, three years. But that's a unit where they got a lot of experience, coaches, all that new staff. And if they can, I, I think Southern's promising. I just got to see it from them because they did take a step back last year. Yeah. I think, I think Ron Matz has been, you know, retained through like three different coaches. Three different yeah, like yeah, that. he has. Yeah, like, that, that means you're pretty good though. <laughs> like, yeah. he came in with Broadway. Yeah, came in with Broadway, stayed on with Washington, and, Vincent and now Brown he's still, still with uh with the guy they got there now. I wonder if he like crawfish. Uh, wait, why you <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm about to say, why you say that? Oh, okay, that makes <laughs> If I, I ain't gonna lie, he, if, if he's there, I'm pretty sure he's the highest paid O line coach in the SEO. That's the only reason I can see him. Doing that. Or he just loves the North Carolina. Team. I, I he, just love, he just loves that school. I, I, I think he got he got kids that he want to see yeah. finish up school or something like that. He got family that he want to finish school. Hey, G. We got schools in Louisiana. We got schools there, too. Hey, listen. <laughs> take them. Hey, North take them with y'all. I take them. Yeah, B, I, BJ said they have I a high school off your campus. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right there. Southern Lab, right? <laughs> Right across from the mini dome, right there. Yeah, going on down there where you ain't got to smell all that puppy chow and all. Put so always got to fix your darn doghouse. So I got a question for you, Blue. And you know, it's pertaining to uh, uh, Ramirez, Coach Ramirez, uh, Ramirez from uh, with us. Uh, given the fact that he was when he was in the league, he was mainly a zone blocker. Do you think he take that? That that type of uh, mentality and bring it to our offensive line, that that scheme, or do we just see straight up power? You know, power blocking. But then again, and then I'm looking at it like, well, you got you, you had a thousand yard rusher the last two years in Ladarius on. So I'm just asking, like, what what type of scheme you think we, he would bring as far as when it comes to blocking? Uh, this isn't a cop out. I, I got to see who's calling the plays first for Jackson. Yeah. We don't even yeah. know who's who's the OC yet. So that's gonna, I think that's that, that's that, that I think it's going to be TC. But there's been a lot of rumors they're bringing someone in potentially late. So I, I need to see that first before I, I get with that. But I mean, O, o line coaches, dude, there's not a D D one offensive line coach that can't coach multiple different schemes. I don't think he's locked into what he ran at Texas Southern. Yeah. I I would say with that personnel, I'm running gap, baby. We gonna beat yeah. the hell out of you. We ain't no not. You got to. Yeah, yeah. Take, you, you got to. Take they got the biggest split. O line. Yeah, yeah, take manageable yeah. splits and, and and just play gap. You know, yeah. and play gap because of that offensive line. Though I think because of that unit, yeah. you have the option to just simplify it and play gap. I mean, you you don't have to. I don't think that he has to come in and think. And again, to to Blue's point, it's gonna matter. Who's calling the plays because the cadence and the formation uh, sequence, as well as like how he calls plays in 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 a, in, in simpatico, like all of those things are going to matter uh, based off of how he's going to teach the scheme uh, and how the install schedule is going to look. But right now, what he's teaching is base level, the base level stuff that TC wants them to figure out. And I would be a bet if I'm a betting man right now, it's probably gap responsibility, right? And being able to know when to be able to go to the next level, when to possibly chip and go next level. I mean, you're getting rudimentary kind of uh, base level offensive line uh, concept right now. Uh, but as you get closer to the summer and you get to camp, uh, once we know exactly for a fact who's going to be the guy, we get a chance. E, you had a question. I'm sorry. We, we, we can't do that to you. Go ahead, E. Um, I wanted to ask G and Zach, like, how do you think Howard's offensive line replaces Donkwa and Weatherspoon? I know they got that big guy from Coastal Carolina that transferred in um, that matches about the same size, but I'm just interested in your thoughts. Mm. You can't replace them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that. that like, <laughs> other school, other school is going to get 
is going to get drafted in two years. Like, you just don't replace that. Like, you don't get a guy that athletic at that size be able to do it. That's why Syracuse, when that comes, who was the coach who became the head coach of Syracuse? He got Weatherspoon. That means, that means, that told me everything I need to know. That kid was, he was amazing last year. He, he might have been that. better than Donkwa last year. He actually had a better year than Donkwa. He was well, better than Donkwa. He had a better year than Donkwa. And he's gone. He just wasn't, you know, he wasn't draft eligible. But, yeah, Donkwa, it's going to be hard to replace those two. Honestly, the team was the team was loaded. Yeah. Last year. The, team, the team was loaded last year. And it's going to be really hard for y'all to replace a lot of those key, those pieces. But I think y'all still have three interior guys returning. So, at least that kind of helps. Avita Zane. But from the outside, yeah, I see the kid from Coastal Carolina. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think he's been playing that much. I don't think he's like, yo, Banks, what is wrong with you, man? Banks is just <laughs> like so wrong, bro. Like Banks is old man, bro. Yeah, Banks is old man, man, but he that Morgan ain't got to deal with that offense well no more. Bro. I want y'all to remember this. I want y'all to remember this because when they lose. For like the twelfth time in a row. <laughs> Damn. Damn. We're gonna come back to this. Okay. So, uh, so, so Josh, hey, them, them, them young fellas didn't name Morgan State, and that boy Banks, it, it was it was gonna be off from that point. Well, he was shaking backstage. Well, speaking what of him, this is not a rival, bro. Josh, who's, who's RB one, G? Well, speaking of Morgan, though, no, I, I got a question for Banks, man. I um, oh, I answer, I answer at, at the at the go, but. I got a question for Banks. Um, I know last year we talked about, um, you know, quarterback and and running back in the back in the offensive backfield for Morgan. What do you think is going to be different for Morgan this year as opposed to last year in terms of that offensive backfield? Does Morgan have good running back? Uh, is JJ coming back? Yes. Okay, he's solid. They He'll scored touchdowns top. last year. I mean, he <laughs> did. It was all right last year. JJ's like the fifth best running back in the conference. Out of I mean, 16? Right. There's, a, there's a lot of there's – a, there's a few things. Hold on, wait. Let's make sure we preface that. Yeah, Gerald, has Gerald was just going to lead it out there. There's a couple teams that have more than one running back. That's, see, that was nasty work that G did that. I'm it's sorry. Really nasty work. And I knew nasty Erica work. was going to follow up with that. Okay. There's a couple teams in the conference see. that have multiple running backs that yeah. will be – God dog, bro. Yeah, I, uh, I asked that question in, real, in good faith, man, to get a good faith answer for BJ. It don't bother me, bro. It don't, it don't bother me because I know what we got coming. Like, yeah. I know what's on the way. You know, it's one of the players coming to quarterback. The truth is coming. Don't worry about Cliff, that. The Clifton McDowell, coming. late ad. Listen, listen. Yeah. Clifton was a good one. Okay. Clifton that was is a definitely good one. We won a national championship. <laughs> that's the case. We won them both. Hey, we won them both of them. <laughs> That's the case. Everything's right? always hypothetical with y'all. No, it's not really <laughs> hypothetical. I'll tell you what. It's not. It's not hypothetical. Think it in your head. No, 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 no. Wow. No, I know what. That's nasty. 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 Oh, nasty. Look at this. Look at this. I'm just taking it in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, G, G, what was your what was your question, OG? Who's your RB one at HBCU football? Oh, right now across HBCU football. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jerry Hunter. Yeah. Jerry Hunter. Mm-hmm. Glad you're all right. Cool. I, I thought I was going to beat that tonight. Hey, but, the, but but the listen. Here's the question about who my RB two is though. It might be in the same room with him. <laughs> <laughs> might be in the same room with him. I mean, James. Might it's be in the same room with him. But no, 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 no. But no. But. Second best is uh, I will say state. that you gotta add Mari Taylor uh, back, ladies and gentlemen. Mari Taylor he's, he's, uh, uh, he's, he's third in the MEAC to me. I got him as number three in the MEAC. Jamari behind e, behind Eden and Jared. Yeah, and I, it's really a tie between him and Gillis. I really do like Gillis. I do. I like Gillis I like too. Gillis. I just I, I, got can't, I cannot make Gillis. I can't make yeah. I I, I, I as much as I try to I got a hunter, I got a hunter, I got a hunter, I got a hunter. I got Gillis, then I got James, then I got no, Bell. son. I can't give you a Gillis. Over I can't all. give you Gillis right there. I, I, I want, no, but listen, no, but Banks, hey, but Banks, listen, all jokes aside, I, tr- I really do want to. 
Because I think he has the best overall skill set. And, and I'm saying I think that because overall skill set, he probably is, is. And I'm right. And I'm saying, and I'm saying from from a running back. Okay, perspective, I see what you're saying. Okay, what, what perspective, he has right. to the adversity he has to face because he doesn't have as much talent to work with the as, front of him. as much. He, he don't got nobody right. So, my point, <laughs> well, so he's making it happen. So he's making it happen, which is crazy. Like, like if you have to, by the time you reach the line of scrimmage, got to already fight through two defenders. Yeah, that's problematic. Yeah, and so I give him it his is. credit because I give him his yeah. credit because he like that's really hard to do, and then also to be durable to do that yeah. for an entire season. So I give him his credit there. But, but that's it, it, it's for that reason. But as much as I want to, I think if he was somewhere else, we're not even having this conversation. That's he's right. he's a pro prospect. Yeah, somewhere that's else. Right. I'm, I'm trying to right. Yeah. He's a pro prospects if he's somewhere else, but because he's there, I like as much as I want to go to bed for because I know he a ball he can play. I I got him at four. I got him at four on mine, but I understand why you have him at two because he the skill set is there. I mean, you you see it. I mean, the skill set is there. The, the kid can play. Plus, it's, it pops I mean, the size and the size too. Like it's, yeah. it's he's already pro ready though. Okay, this is it. This is in the MIAC, right? But we doing all yeah in the in the swag in the swag QB RB one in the swag. I'm not gonna lie. I, 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 don't I don't know, man. Is it Earth? I don't know. It might be. Is it Earth Mulligan? Is it Earth Mulligan? It's gotta be Earth yeah. Mulligan. Or Dante. Yeah, I'd say Earth. Yeah. 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 Dante is a close second. Dante is a close second. Did yeah, yeah, graduate? Now, no, no, he's nah, he back. And what about, what about, he, um, like the short yards back, though. What about Dean? Dean? What about Dean? Dean yeah, is back, too. Yeah, he's there. Now I will say, but I'm saying if you putting them both together, then maybe. But like neither one of them individually is in the top three. I, I mean, say, uh, I don't want you to hear anything over him though. Oh, like, well, oh yeah, Elijah Burris. Elijah Burris. Burris is my. He's my RB. He's my RB two is three is kind of like. Yeah, I got Elijah. Uh, I got Elijah in my top. I got Elijah in my top four. I coached Elijah, man. So you know, I, I mean, I'm you talking? Right you talking about a straight home run threat? You know, in terms of the swag backs we're talking about, and I, I got to go with Irv Mulligan, man. That yeah, if he didn't get hurt, yeah, yeah he hit home, he hit home, he hit home. That, that dude's a home run hitter, man. He's a home is, run. Is Eaglin back for A and M? Yes, yes, he is. Oh well, shoot, I gotta put him up there. That you know what I'm saying, I, I, I think I, I'll, 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 I'll say this right here, though, G. If you go back and you look at uh, Eaglin's film from last year. It wasn't as good as last. It, 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 it was. It was. It, it, it was. Some, he, had, he had a few milk carton games. He did. Yeah. He did. <laughs> Came up missing. Came <laughs> up missing. And, I, and, and, and this is to be. This is to be honest with it. Going back and looking at some of those milk carton games, I can't blame it on the offensive line either. Nah, that was him. Mm. Oh, so brother Spencer, so brother Spencer, y'all. Hey, Bert, got- hey, Adam did. Hey, he did graduate, but he he's in grad. He's he's a grad. He's a grad player. He's got one more year of no, I, I, I got one. I got one for you guys. A, a, a lookout guy, be on the lookout. Kendrick Rhymes, Southern University. Yeah, how about the same guy? So, Kobe Dillon, he is he gone already, or he's Kobe still- Dillon is Kobe Dillon is back and he's healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, got about Dillon. Yeah, you know, gonna, I think I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. The team was gonna suffer a look the most because they had. I think they had one of the most talented running back rooms in the conference. Is Grambling. Oh, well, they, they oh, lost everybody. Yeah, they, they lost, lost everybody. everybody. Yeah. They lost everybody. Like, it, it, it didn't make no sense. Um, to be honest, they had the best offensive line. If they return all them offensive linemen, Gremlin was going to be set for two more years solidly. They, yeah, they were. They were. The five yeah. team picked them dang offensive linemen when they hit the portal. Like, they were highly touted recruits when they hit the portal. All of them. Yeah, and I mean, I, I had to go with uh, – you know some of the more established folks. Like I said, I think did he transfer? Adam, Adam, did he transfer? Because he definitely was. He just was a junior last year. Like he, did he transfer? Yeah, what, a lot. Of I call, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call him tomorrow. I swear he's there. He probably didn't play during the spring, but he's there. I swear, Birds is still there. He's definitely there. But I, I'll call him tomorrow and see. 
I call him wrong. But go ahead. Somebody was going. My fault. We got five minutes. We can't <laughs> go last ten. There, there's some really good independent guys though. I think like uh, Tennessee State returns was yeah. Jordan Gant, who was a freshman yeah. All American. He had like 10, t- 10 rushing touchdowns last year. And I, J- I know Josh is gonna do the throw up sound again. But like Ken, <laughs> Ken- Kenji <laughs> Christian at A and T, for what he had to deal with. You got to give him some credit, man. That can't yeah, yeah, I got, I got to give. When, I your give quarterback him. is throwing for sixty yards and you're still running for a hundred. Like, and they think they're going to go better than one in ten. I mean, sorry. Uh, he's, he's a big, I, I got a, I got a, I got a shot. My boy Mel, Mel made it righteously out in the in the chat. Um, I, I can't really talk to what he's referring to, but I can, but I, I won't. <laughs> man, we know that running back y'all got that, man. Stop acting like that, man. Hey, knock it off. Man. Oh, boy. The, a- the Ashford kid. The Ashford kid. Yeah, yeah, Ashford's ridiculous. Ashford coming in. It's gonna be, yeah. He's going to be a problem. He's going. He's ridiculous, man. That dude there, is There's uh, a kid that's going to nasty. Osborne, too. Fred Davis Jr. Just remember. Yeah. He started yeah. his career at Mercer. Was a freshman mm-hmm. All American with like 14 Russian touchdowns. Had to go that to Garden that. City. Earned two that. All American honors up there. Man, that kid's a ball. He's like 210, just under six foot. The kid can run the football. Look like it. Is he dropping on high with 2.0? Uh, well, no, nah, I ain't going. Uh, yeah. That's what I did. He, got, he got a long way to go before he can be that. <laughs> so, like, who's the, who's the, the best? Uh, Defensive we don't line in in, in all of HBCU. Defensive line. Man, knock it off. Why did you say knock it off? Get out of here. Knock it off, dog. That's what we're doing. Let's go to the last ten. Oh, uh, man. Hey, that boy makes funny, man. That was uh, terrible, I go, man. I go, I go first. I gotta go to bed. Go ahead, G. This dude. <laughs> At least he's at least he honest. I am tired. Um, no, I've been I've been off. I haven't been on the show in a while, man. I'm glad to be back, man. It's just give me some life, you know what I mean. So we have an off day tomorrow, quote unquote, but we still got to go to the weight room. So I got to wake up, but um, it's been a blessing, man. To, you know, we'll talk to y'all again, and uh, I want to just shout out to Blue Man. He gave me opportunity to work with uh, Sports Illustrated, man. That's been huge. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, I told you in private, but I'll tell you in public too, man. Uh, it means a lot of people reach out to me and actually care about what comes out of my mouth and what I'm able to write. So I think I'm means I'm doing the right thing. And um, I want to give a shout out to myself and for all the brothers out there, anybody out there, take care of your mental health. It's been six months for me strong, uh, we're going to therapy. So uh, I just want to make sure I keep spreading that. Uh, I, I ignored it a lot. I was a typical football player. Nothing, you know, nothing fazed me, nothing bothered me thing. And then you really come back home and come down to earth and you're like, okay, I'm not okay. So it's okay to not be okay. So I just want to put that out there before I go to bed. I'm going to do my meditation like my therapist told me to do if I go to bed. And I'm going to have a good morning, okay? I'm ready. I appreciate y'all as always, man, for real, man. Much love to you. We love you, bro. Absolutely, right, bro. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Let's go, to, uh, let's, go to, let's go to my brother, Zach. Zach, last 10, my brother. Man, it was good to be back, man. I can't. I'm looking forward, man, chopping it up with football for the next few weeks with you guys, going through all the record predictions. Hopefully, we don't get you know a ten and one record for a team that don't even make the conference championship next year. So, man, we'll, hopefully, we'll step it up as a as a unit this year. But I'm looking forward to it, man. And again, man, Bruh. shout out to my brother, man. Been killing the scouting reports, man. For for the yeah. site, man. Um, we had to put a pause on uh, content for now. Transitioning, y'all probably seen SI got purchased, so we're working on content migration, all that stuff. But listen, we got a bunch of scouting reports, preseason previews, spring previews coming out as soon as that launches in a few weeks. But, man, appreciate always being on here. Much love, my brother. Let's go to my brother Herb. Herb, last 10. Yeah, man. Um, it was a blast talking about football, man, even though Josh, I know Josh was low-key uh, loving the fact that he could censor the basketball talk. <laughs> but, man, on that note, man, I, I just want to extend uh, a great deal of appreciation to Josh, BJ, Erica, you know, the rest of the gang for supporting HPC Hoops Weekly because this is our inaugural season. 
And from all looks and and you know and feedback that I've gotten, is it was a it was a it was a hit, and it was something it was. that um, that uh, you know that means a lot to me. Um, that being said, I got one or two announcements that I got to make before we go to the next person. Um, there will be an HBCU Hoops Weekly com coming, and that is going to be. For all the folks that are listening, if you're a player, if you're a coach, if you know you're an admin that wants to get your shine out for your program, doesn't matter whether it's NAIA, Division Two, uh, Division One. Once that site goes up, it'll be the hub for everything HBCU hoops related, whether it's recruiting, whether it's uh, content, commentary, articles, you name it. Um, that's going to be the the website home for HBCU hoops weekly, and it's going to be exclusively part of the HBC nightly network. So uh, for those folks, man, um, that will rock with us through the whole season, uh, this is my gift to y'all. You know, my writing prowess is going to be added to it as well as some other heavy hitters that I, I've already approached that are going to be doing content for the site. And um, as a reminder for Sunday night, man, end of the season show for HBC Hoops Weekly. Uh, tune in, man. You know, the mastermind himself, Langston head coach Chris Wright, is going to be front and center on our show on Sunday night. So if you've got questions you want to talk about, you know, ask about how Langston, you know, how he turned Langston around, his history at Talladega, the fact that he's been doing this work with HBCU programs in general, tune in, man. And we're, it's just going to be a big celebration about the HBCU basketball season. Again, really appreciate it, you guys. Let me go to my brother, uh, Doc. Doc, last 10, my brother. Man, it's been great to be back on the show. As everybody know, I'll be, most of the time I'll be at work. Um, don't get out to like midnight most of the time. So, um, uh, took, the, took the illness just to be, keep me here at the house and actually could talk football and stuff like that. And also, to a point where Gerald was talking about uh, taking care of your mentals, make sure you take care of your mental. You know, as far as grown men, like my mama would say, it's grown as men. Take care of your mentals, your mental health. Uh, it is a life statement. And also just take care of your personal health too, because a lot of, you know, a lot of us don't, we don't like doctors. So what, go, you know, go to a doctor, Get yourself checked checked out. But um last but not least, uh um shout out to Coach Tamika Reed for Jackson State. Uh she did one hell of a coaching job this year. Yes, uh sir. in the season with a 21 game win streak. Um how we couldn't hang with them girls from UConn. Um I wish the season would not have ended like that, but we you know, we we made you know our our squad made history, and um, for all those transfers out there, hey, y'all come to where the Rangers reside. <laughs> hey, come to HBCU. Period. I mean, I, right. I, I'll, say, I'll say it. I'll say it again. If you can play, you'll be seen. It doesn't matter where you at. And right. you know, the basketball product that HBCUs is as good as any place else. Facts. Facts. Busy last ten, my brother. Yeah, man, it's uh, boy, <laughs> spring football, man, it's here, man. Like this dude, it's been a long hiatus, <laughs> you know. I had to, I, you know how much, you know how much stuff happened since November. I think it was what November eighteenth. Y'all had a lot more losing and a lot more sports. Hey, here it comes. <laughs> Whoa. Nasty work, Erica. Nasty work. Hence, she said, nasty work. You know, but wait, well, no, 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 no. That's true. That's true. But in addition to that, our conference as a whole, because of the representation who was representing it at the time, has made us regress <laughs> on the national <laughs> so, so, so we know who that is attributed to. So that's what know there. As I digress, what I want to yeah, yeah. oh, say, God. what I want to try and say, what I want to try and say is that I'm so glad that we're talking ball, man. 
like Josh, that 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 the first few moments you took earlier in this uh the show is very reminiscent, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of those days where man you could just dust off the cleats, man. Oh, you could feel them. You, you, hey, you gotta you gotta stick them, you gotta stick that one finger in the back just to make it all right, all right, they good. Put them you lace them up. And you ready to go? You know what I'm saying? Stick one, stick one finger in the you know, back. One finger, one, no, no, I'm saying like one finger. Balls, balls. <laughs> no, no, no. I know what you mean. No though. You mean on, you mean on hey, the cleat? Yeah, on the cleat. Hey, on the cleat. Hey, on the cleat. Hey, on the cleat. Hey, but the point of what? Yeah, if you don't have a shoehorn, you don't have a shoehorn. You gotta, you gotta put the finger in the back of the. the, the, the I get what you say. The hook. the hook. I don't know. What the, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's it's the hook on the back of the cleat. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point I'm getting at is is that it's just great to talk ball. It's great yeah. to see that 2024 is here. Uh, before you know it, we got to be literally in training camp uh, and in the season. And, you know, the MIAC champs will finally reside in Baltimore. So, like, I'm just excited. I'm just excited for this great season. That's it. Erica, last 10. I just forgot what I was going to say because that threw me all the way off. Why would you say something like that? Why would you say something like that? Because it's the truth. It's not. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Um, I actually want to shout out Banks because I've actually never seen a person cause chaos on X like that for like two hours. I've, I've never seen anything like it. Oh my, in my god. Life. Man. That, that was the most horrible thing I've ever seen. And then, um, it's, oh go ahead. Hey, and I still got I still got some more tweets in the chamber too. So like you don't you stop. Wanna, just save just save them, man. Football yeah, season yeah. be in no time. Save and then them. Delaware State wanna bring that little happy tail. Hey, that's what I'm saying. We don't we don't stop. You feel me? We don't stop. We click clanking them, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. All right, the cocaine man's at it again. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, though. Go ahead. That's that's literally all I had. That's all you got. Three days. Yeah. My brother, BJ. B. Jizzle, last 10, my brother. Hey, man, it's almost the most wonderful time of the year, man. I know we in March Madness, but uh, the uh, spring previews um, on HBCU uh, football season, um, the first one will be out in the next couple of days. And they'll be rolling after that. I will tell you that the spring is a little bit difficult uh, with the transfer portal because we don't know what these final rosters are going to look like. Um, yep. I learned that the hard way last year. We thought a roster was going to look one way in the spring, and it looked a completely different way uh, by the middle of May. Uh, so uh, those are going to be rolling out. But but keep in mind that uh, those spring previews, I know you're going to see them on the website, it, it's going to be just like I wrote them in pencil. Uh, they'll be ready to erase and readjust and move along. Um, also, man, I want to give a shout out to all of our, uh, everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching, who subscribed to the website. If you have not subscribed to the website, make sure uh, you go and join. Uh, join, uh, you know, come a part of our family. Uh, that way, anytime we have these things or I put out anything, you'll get an alert. Um, so make sure you go. And tell a friend, man. Tell somebody about HBCU uh, nightly and the things that we got going on here. Uh, because what you see today uh, is only going to be bigger and better uh, tomorrow. So uh, keep uh, your eyes open. Keep your eyes peeled. Those spring previews are coming. And ladies and gentlemen, man, thank you guys for, for sticking with us tonight, man. Um, as you guys can tell, man, uh, our excitement it's through the roof, man. It, it's this is literally, man. This is the second most wonderful time of the year. Um, I can smell the grass. I can smell the paint. You know what I mean? I, I really can, man. And, and I see the I see the football rolling out. I see the helmets, man. I know that there's not a lot of um, not a huge amount of physical contact that happens during the spring, and that's understandable. To keep guys safe and keep guys uh, ready to go during the football season, but. Still, man, just to see guys on their sideline, man, with those play call sheets, to see guys, you know, the, you know, going through install, getting in their meetings, getting inside of that, getting inside that weight room together, man. This, this is uh, this is the time of the year, man, where I start getting pumped up, and, and it is all our job collectively. The number one thing that we do here as a network is we 
help to promote and build the football season. Uh, look at us like the PBC or look at us like the like the uh, like like the zone when it comes to football. You know, what I mean, as they do for boxing. This is what we do for football. All of us, whether it's different networks, different shows, our partners, everybody here, man, it's our job to get you guys prepared and ready to rock and roll when it comes to the football season, man. And so we we do that very, very well here. Um, starting next week, we'll go through our first four schedules next week. We'll go through our first four schedules next week. It's going to be fun. Make sure you guys are here. 9 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time next week, 8 p.m. Central. 6 p.m. Pacific. We will be on next week going through our first four schedules next week. We will release who those schedules will be the day of the show. The day of the show is when we will say who we'll be breaking down next week. So uh, we, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for staying with us. Make sure you guys are logged in. It's 100% free for you to join us here at the HBC Nightly Network. We'll see you guys next week. We'll see you guys Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the season finale of HBCU Hoops Weekly. From everybody here at the HBCU Nightly Network, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys on the other side of it. And as always, if you see us out and about, show us some love. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Be good. Have you joined the fastest growing community in sports? What are you waiting for? Head over to hbcunitedly.com forward slash join and join the community. Early access to events, exclusive promo codes for merchandise, all at your fingertips. 100% free. That's right. That's hbcunightly.com forward slash join. hbcunightly.com forward slash join and have.